Four play, presented by Barstool Sports. Billy Horschel, we have a huge show. We got Billy Horschel on the show for 90 minutes. He speaks. I will tease it with he begins the interview with, well, this should be interesting in what is one of the more awkward first two or three minutes in the history of our interviews and then turns into what I think people will uh, take away as one of the best interviews we've ever done. Billy Horschel's great. He's very opinionated. He's very thoughtful. He asks us what we think about the live stuff. We get into winning $10 million uh, uh, FedEx Cup winning last week at the Memorial, our history with him, what people say on the internet, sharing a mental coach with a one Frankie Borelli, uh, Dr. Brett McCabe, and a million other things. So Billy Horschel was phenomenal, boys. I don't want to do the thing where we talk about the entire interview for the whole show before the interview, but no. everybody can weigh in, I believe, and just say it was an excellent, excellent 90 minutes. I Well, imagine uh, the, 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 the breaking news is in the 90 minutes. Like, that, like you know it's a good interview. Like, there is... There's no surprises here. If you've seen that he was on the show for 90 minutes, imagine it was all like awkward and horrific for an hour and a half. So Billy couldn't have been better. Trent, what'd you think? I think I just cut you off. I'm sorry. No, I'm doing this new system here doing the podcast and you're usually in the top left of my corner. Now you're in the bottom and it's like behind my mic. It's really throwing me off. (laughs) Um, I'm actually not going to say anything about the Billy interview. I, I agree with Riggs. I think, Sometimes maybe we talk a little bit too much about the interviews that we do. So you just going to have to listen to it. Yeah. He's great. 90 minutes. We're friends now with Billy. It was excellent. Yeah, so people were going to love it. People were absolutely going to love it. We have to plug the live show. We got Kevin Kisner and Kirk Minahan will be in person. And we are going to watch the Celtics game right afterwards. Uh, you could do both. It's going to be great. You could go to the tournament during the day. Then you can go to the live show at the Wilbur. And then you could go watch the Celtics right afterwards. Games at 9 o'clock. Game five, phenomenal series. So there's a lot going on with that. Go get your tickets. We got links all over the place. Make sure you get tickets. First live show we've ever done. We want to look like cool people. We're going to have two phenomenal guests. Podcast Jesus in Boston, one of the biggest names in media in Boston, Kirk Minahan. And then obviously one of the most, maybe the most well-liked guy, ain't no hobby, on the PGA Tour. And in our little world that we got here, our orbit, in Kevin Kisner, the pride of Aiken. So make sure that you uh, get your tickets for that. Breaking 90 tonight. We'll be throwing, mer- we'll be throwing merchandise out into the oh, crowd. I'm going to bring some stuff. Love that. I know, Riggs, you're going to have some stuff. We're going to have our merch team send some shirts. I'm going to see if I can get them into the top section of the Wilbur. See how good the elbows go. You got that arm strength? We'll you got that kind of arm strength? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You have to come to the Wilbur. Trent also said if we fill out the place, he's going to take his shirt off. So nipples exposed at the Wilbur. He's going to walk out. First thing. I think the first thing you see when you come to the four-play show is Trent just rips his shirt off to a screaming crowd if, if that place is filled out. So that's something to really get you into the building. We get it. The Celtics are playing. It's in Boston. We're not fucking idiots. It sucks. That sucks. But we're genuinely telling you we will not be we will not be doing the show when the Celtics start. When when that ball goes up in the air, the show will be over. Guaranteed. That's Trent's guarantee today. That he guarantees he will be done with the show. Yeah, we know how important the finals are. I mean, the Celtics are in the finals. That's a big deal in Boston. But we're gonna be at the Wilbur. We're going to do our show. We're going to finish up, and then we're going to go watch the game somewhere. We're, we'll probably decide where we're going to watch it, and we can have a bunch of people join us, and we'll all go have a merry time at whatever bar we pick. But, yeah, it's going to be fun. Buy a ticket. Yeah, if we fill it out, I will take my shirt off. I don't want to take my shirt off. I do because I want to sell it out, but I'm nervous about potentially taking my shirt off. So if we sell it How out, I'll take shirt my shirt off. How long does the shirt take off? What? How long does the shirt stay off? I think you do the Harry Higgs. Yeah, maybe flash the crowd. I might take it all the Woo! way off. Um, but I, I can't sit there and do the show with my shirt off. That's something I, I won't do. And I don't want to get a license for that. The uglier looks in all of mankind. Oh, Just yeah. If I were shirtless, to see that. Nobody if I wants were shirtless to see that. right now, it'd be a, a, the worst look ever. So. I really think we have to get a license from like the city of Boston for you to do that in a live show. I mean, there's way too much flesh being shown on, on stage. Oh. I want to say this. If you're listening to this and you're like, how do I buy tickets? Go to our Twitter page. We're going to pin it on the four play Twitter page. We're going to pin the Ticketmaster link because it's been way too confusing. We're going to pin that. And then on Instagram, right underneath in our bio, it's going to be the Ticketmaster link right there. So all day today, as you're listening to this, you're listening to our beautiful voices. You're about to listen to Billy Horschel talk for 90 minutes about the game of golf. 
You're going to go and buy some tickets if you're in the city of Boston, if you're near Boston. We're just, dude, Kevin Kisner's going to walk out in front of a huge live crowd and talk about golf. That's outrageous. That's, I mean, what are we even talking about here? It's US Open week. We've got one of the best players in the world and best personalities in all sports coming onto a live stage on a podcast. Let's go. It's one of the best guests you can get. So get your tickets. Go on, get your tickets. And then obviously we have a ton to get to. A lot of names are dropping. The dominoes are falling. We got Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau's agents released statements about him joining the Live Tour. People resigning their memberships to the PGA Tour uh, as they join the Live Tour. Live Tour is just happening. There's been all kinds of pictures, draft, Phil Mickelson and DJ. Um, weird shit going on with the draft and the team. Owens Mixers, we got to get to them first. Transfusion Thursday is brought to you by Owens. We'll be doing live streams next week, brought to you by Owens as well. Um, but it's simply just add Owens. You bring your favorite liquor, you pour it in there, you grab any of the Owens Mixers. Our favorite is the Barstool Transfusion, obviously. You put it in there with some vodka, and you have yourself an excellent cocktail. You can make a Paloma. They got the mint cucumber and lime. Um, they got grapefruit and lime. They got a they got margarita mix now. Owens Barstool Transfusion. That's what delivers a crisp, refreshing flavor combination of real grape juice and ginger ale. It's perfect for the golf course, your porch, or at home, or watching a, a golf, watching live if you want to watch live on YouTube, watching golf, the U.S. Open next week, or an RBC Canadian Open this week, whatever you want to watch, uh, NBA Finals, uh, Stanley Cup Finals, Hockey Podcast, whatever you're watching, owensmixers.com. Check the store locator. Find a store that has Owens near you. If you don't feel like getting off the couch, order on Amazon. Get it delivered in less than 30 minutes. We've done it before on GoPuff. That was crazy. We did that at Casamigos. Um, 30 minutes. They just bring it to you uh, on GoPuff. So Owens is the best. You pour it in. They're reinventing the mixer game. Owens, Barstool, foreplay, golf, all that. Pour it in with your favorite liquor and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, A lot's happened. Clearly, a lot has occurred. First thing I'll mention, Tiger Woods withdraws from the U.S. Open. I don't think we have to really harp on it. We spoke last week or last show. This is kind of what we all predicted. Tiger sitting out the U.S. Open. He looked exhausted. He looked sore. It looked like his leg just ran out of gas at uh, Southern Hills. He's going to take a little bit more time. Probably knows that's his least likely chance to win is the U.S. Open. Super tight fairways. Long, long, rough. Hilly topography of New England. See you later. He's going to save it all for the British Open at St. Andrews. I have no issue with it. I don't think anybody does. Uh Uh-oh. Hello? Yeah. Keep going. (laughs) I wasn't sure if I froze. froze Nobody has an issue with it. Tiger Woods. We all, we're all good. Tiger Woods withdrew from the US Open. Fine. We all kind of predicted that. Yep. Expect it. Yeah, oh, it was, it was writing on the wall. Tiger Woods' leg is just, you know, he wants to get better for, uh, you know, the Open. And we said this months ago that he was just going to live in, in St. Andrews and he's going to be one with the town. He's going to be in Scotland, just adapting to the weather, adapting to the atmosphere of the Open Championship. And he's going to absolutely dominate it. I want to say that. And I also want to say that I cut you off before. Breaking 90 is out tonight. So, the first attempt. Um, I know you tried to get that in before. Breaking 90, first attempt, Sea Wayne Country Ooh. Club, uh, the south shore of Long Island. Go, Trent, Trent Daddy gets there. Trent steps up to the tee with the with one goal, and that goal is to break 90. It would be an 80s man. And does he do it? You'll have to tune in tonight on YouTube at 8 p.m. I like that. I like that teaser. Yep, Tiger Woods, take all the time you need, get healthy, come out, win the Open Championship at the old course at St. Andrews for the third time. He's won by eight shots there, and he's won by five shots there. So he likes that place, said it's his favorite golf course in the world. We'll fucking see you across the pond, uh, Tigre. Really, uh, uh, rest, recover, do your whole thing, have fun with the family, say hi to Charlie for us, and we'll see you over on the other side of the pond. Um, okay, Phil Mickelson, probably the biggest one. Uh, one of the biggest names in golf, the second biggest name in golf over the last 20 or 30 years, top 10 player of all time, six major championships. I think he's got 45 maybe PGA Tour wins at this point, made a ton of money, colorful character. We had a whole thing with Alan Shipnuck about the book and Phil, and then he just reemerges, announces his whole little statement about how he's playing the live golf. He's not going to play um, the PGA Tour. He will try to play just the major championships that he spent all this time with Amy. He's done Hundreds of hours of therapy to help with his gambling addiction. He called that reckless and an embarrassment in a little interview with, I believe, Bob Eric posted on Sports Illustrated that I saw. Um, but Phil, I mean, he just, I will say he went from nothing, 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 nothing to just a pretty heavy reemergence. He's in the leather fucking jacket. Like he's got a Harley taking weird pictures with the eyeballs coming out of his sockets. He's got facial hair, which he's never had before. And he's just all in on the live golf tour now. Um, he just, 
he just kind of bombastically reemerged into the world. And um, I'm kind of here for it. I mean, I know there's a lot of takes. I'm kind of here for Phil. Just he went full heel and he looks a little ridiculous. His face is a completely different color down awful. here than it is up here. And he's just, yeah, he looks, he looks like he's been hiding for four months. It's pretty much what he looks under like. a rock with like <laughs> no razor, no nothing has not. And also like, his skin complexion looks a little pale. Like it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's been a healthy, like relaxing. I'm on the back porch, like talking with my wife and like a therapist month where you're getting somewhere. It literally looks like he was in a basement and now he's just like, you know what? We're doing this thing. We're going to live door. There could be fireworks and I look horrendous. And I don't think that could be any more evident. His picture with Greg Norman. I mean, I was, I was like, oh, oh, oh boy, we've got an issue. These boys are, I don't know if Phil's got like a leadership position, but it looks like it's tomato, tomato, and they're going to be a complete mess. I mean, he, he reflects or he looks like what he's been through these past few months. Yeah. Like yeah. If you're, if you like, it would have been weirder if he'd come out and he looked like, like he looked happy or, no. or just like super healthy. What? He could have looked decent. Like, I understand it's been a tough month. He didn't have to look like he was taking. Yeah, but Mike Trent's Tyson saying it would have looked it would it wouldn't have fit the scenario. And the way that he looks fits the scenario perfectly. I think it's I genuinely think it's calculated. <laughs> I, I do. I really do. I think if if he came out looking like <laughs> like oh yeah no it, it hasn't worn on me at all that I've been completely banished from the sport and the spotlight that I love like it would have been like he looks like a guy who's been through it and and it's just like people are talking about it like oh this is a guy who's fucking he's got facial hair now he looks like he's aged over these over this time he's just looks like he's he looks how he's supposed to look after what he's gone through. It looks like hell he, uh, just came out of hell is basically what you're saying. 100%. On purpose by, by a Ken trend. Jack from – Yeah, calculated. Ken decision. Jack. Oh, now we're all Ken, we're all forgetting that Phil like Mickelson it. is no, the most I calculated like dude I, in the world. I actually think it makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm, I'm – after reading the book, I'm actually more inclined to believe that. I hadn't even considered that. I just thought he couldn't help it. I think that what you just said, I would be shocked. Like, there's no way Phil Mickelson looked himself in the mirror and didn't realize that he looked like that and was probably like – when you're going to um, a court case, you're going to face a jury of your peers. You want to like dress a certain way. You don't want to come off like some rich, flashy guy. A lot of times you want to look like you're a little bit more blue collar if it's a blue collar jury so that you won't get it's similar where Phil's like probably to your point, Trent, calculated like I don't want to come out like everything's been great and roses. Like I want people to believe from my physical appearance that this has been really hard on me. This wasn't a bonding rapport strategy. Is that like he's trying to like, <laughs> like blend in with the crack Bro, this, out there? I this love dude it. Just, I mean, he looks horrible. This dude just got paid two hundred million dollars. He didn't have to show up looking like shit. There's a reason he looked like shit. He didn't try and look like shit. I actually disagree with Trent on this one, but I, he he wore a leather jacket, grew out his beard, thinks he looks good. Guy's still going through probably a midlife crisis when it comes to his looks. He. He definitely tried to look good. I don't know. That's a weird. Like, I don't think he like calculated to look like somewhat weird and have his eyes bulge out of his head. That would be insane. His eyes are fucking outrageous. I've never <laughs> seen a picture like that. I just think Phil Mickelson can't take photos. I've looked back at other photos and Phil just looks really weird in a lot of photos he's ever taken. Even like PGA Tour headshots, his eyes are bulging out of his head. So Phil's just like a weird looking dude. He's always has been. Um, I thought that this actually went better for Phil than. Like I would have thought, I thought that him waiting until this was a huge mistake because it would have been like, oh, the horror. But I think because so many names joined and the 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 uh, draft was so preposterous, it's almost like him coming back when Tiger returned. It was like Phil's just a part of the chaos now. Like he wasn't the only story, so I actually thought it was okay for him. Like now Phil's just a part of Live and it's just a thing that exists. Well, now. to be clear, the only reason I th- I thought at least that it was gonna be a shit show when he came back was because it was gonna be on the PJ tour and they were gonna be allowed to ask real questions to the people up on the podium. Like when you come back to live, it's a or when you show up and it's the first one is live, you're in a pretty protected area, as you know, some of the reports yeah. coming out yesterday. So him coming back at live, yeah, it wasn't as like crazy because he didn't get asked like the crazy questions that he would have gotten asked if he had shown up at Augusta. 
Yeah, right. and the whole thing has been – it's been interesting in that the actual product of the Live Tour seems more legitimate than I expected it to, but the actual PR aspect of it has been – Far worse than I could have even imagined. I mean, they have Ari Fleischer out there who is like kicking journalists out and like shutting down press conferences when they ask tough questions. And then, you know, these these guys, to their credit, like they're not trained to answer these questions on Saudi Arabia and horrific human um, uh, rights, like atrocities and, and humanity crisis. Like they're not clearly. So they're all kind of answering it. It seems like off the on the fly, which is which is, I guess, what you would you would get. But that juxtaposition with uh, defecting from the PGA Tour, essentially, and the Tour not really saying anything yet, but people kind of going and taking the first step and and essentially retiring and saying that I'm gonna I'm gonna resign from the PGA Tour is putting them in kind of a pickle and all that going on with um, the Tour and then these pictures coming out from the draft and the teams and the logos. Which are so bad that their oh, logos, logos are bad. Logos. They're so oh. bad that the team names are worse. That like the team names and logo combinations are so horrific that I love it. It's almost like it's almost like I'm watching. Uh, well, I can't think of the, the, the name. Um, uh, uh, what's the fucking movie? What's the uh, Ben Stiller Dod- Dodgeball? Not Dodgeball, but Dodgeball is amazing. The the the. Where their models and their looks. What's the, the parents? Zoolander. Zoolander. Oh, Zoolander. It's almost like Zoolander, where it's like I'm literally watching something that is such a caricature of something that could be real that it's that it's a laughing stock and it can't be real, and yet it's real. It's like it's actually what they're doing, and they're taking it seriously, and they're like calculating. They had Graham McDowell there, like calculating with an iPad, like he's in a war room who he's going to draft, and that's just that's all fucking such a joke that watching it in real life is incredible. I'm like, it's like hunger games almost. You're just like, what is wrong with these people that it's, that you're watching this and they're taking it seriously. Like you can't believe that they're taking it seriously that I kind of love it. I kind of think it's amazing. Well, I think it's kind of stunning how I kind of said <clears throat> all my ideas for what I thought would be pretty cool for the PGA tour to do when it comes to team golf. And the, the next day Liv just did every single one of them. Now, now seeing Liv do it, it wasn't a hit. So I'm glad the PGA Tour didn't take that risk. I will say that not having sponsored teams is a huge miss. I'm assuming all the biggest companies in the world, when it comes to the public eye, aren't going to throw their names on this Live Golf Tour. I'm sure they're struggling when it comes to like big companies and corporations throwing their names on teams. But had the PGA Tour done this, you'd be able to get your – like. Team Taylor made and Team Callaway and Team Peter Millar and Team – that's where the logos start to get legit. Like if you get to wear the Peter Millar crown and you're on Team Peter Millar, all right, now you got something. All these logos were like backyard baseball, which is honestly disrespectful to backyard baseball who came out with outrageously good names and logos back in the day. But it just felt very childish and like clip art and like the the four aces led by Dustin Johnson, like the aces, like what are you talking about? Yeah, I get it. And then on their website, it describes why it's called the aces. It says our greatest golf shot in the game of golf. It's like, come on, dude, this is so childish. So I think they did with what they had. I I actually kind of like the ideas. Of, like I thought the fucking draft idea is cool. Obviously, I said that I thought the PJ Tour should do it the day before. So I can't go back on my word and say it was fucking stupid because that was my idea. Like, I just thought it would be a good idea. Um, Everything was weird, though. It was just like – it was almost like it wasn't ready. Like, the logos didn't seem ready. The names were fucking horrific. Like, the lights were weird. Like, the guys were taking it a little too seriously. It looked like a club scene. Things were just off. I thought the idea was there. and The execution was piss poor. I don't disagree. Uh, Yeah, I I mean – Look, when you when you try to change and you try to do something in golf that's completely different from the way it's been done forever, it's going to come off as weird and there's going to be mistakes. And then when you have the backdrop of the extreme controversy and then you also have a tidal wave of golf media and talking heads who are against it, every move that they make is going to get shit on. And it did. I agree with you that like I think it could be in the future something kind of cool that is supplemental to the PGA Tour that is like another – realm of professional golf that guys get to do that could coexist with the PGA tour. Cause currently 
The only the only entity that is making it not allowable for this to exist while everything else in professional golf already exists is the PGA Tour, who has said that, like, we're not going to, you know, uh, allow people and permit people to do this. So if this can exist and it can be more refined and, and improve upon its first iteration in for eight or ten events a year and you have a select – you know, big names in golf that play in it and it's a shotgun start and it's kind of a circus. And then you also have the prestige and what we're used to on the PGA tour, which we get into with Billy Horschel a lot. I, I think that that actually can be better for fans, but if you have to have one or the other, I mean, this is a uh, kindergarten class compared to the PGA tour, which is some AP college course. You know, it's like, that's just, it was childish. Yeah. It wasn't ready. It wasn't fully vetted. They kind of just got it done and the pictures were weird and the videos were weird. And like that shot of Greg Norman looking like he was some kind of dictator or about to like the whole thing was a little bit weird, obviously. But I think if they could coexist, this could get to a point in two years, three years, four years, whatever, um, where these things. This is a, a additional thing to professional golf that's unique and kind of hits on a lot of the things that we've wished were in pro golf. And that could be overall a good thing. I don't know that that has a massive chance of success and happening, but I now think that it's a realistic possibility where I did not beforehand. Yeah. I think they're going to have to burn it's a good a idea to like get it to that level. Like this thing is going to, they just, are, they already, are. I know, but like continually for like four years where they're going to have to uphold this and like keep going back to the well for money because right now it's just not even close in terms of, like, and I kind of agree with some of your analogies, but then it got me thinking, like, F1 and how it started. Like, Williams, for example, famous F1 name. Frankie, maybe you feel like the biggest F1. Like, is that that's not a company. That's just a family name, right? So it's like, maybe it started that way in F1 of just, like, natural names. I honestly have no idea before they got corporations to back it. Because it would be way better if it was, you know, the Mercedes versus Red Bull kind of thing in the game of golf. Um, because right now the logos suck the marketing on that side is like really poor. Um, but well, I, that's funny you say that. Cause I was thinking about their names and how shitty they were. And then I thought to myself about professional sports uh, as they are right now. And if you just think about their names in a vacuum and like their logos and stuff, like obviously there's the all time stuff, but I don't know, just like the first time, like if we just came out with the MLB and we were like, all right, like the Red Sox versus the Blue Jays. And everyone would just be like, okay, these are like, what, your kindergarten daughter come up with these names? Like, I don't, like, what are you talking about? Like, the White Sox. And it's like, okay, like, what, what's next? The Blue Sox? I don't, like, it's just, everything's kind of cheesy and childish, but then, like, there's so much history to them. And, like, it's just, it's, in, it's ingrained in our culture and our life. So I'm not saying, like, the four aces will yeah. eventually be the Yankees. But at some point, it's all just, like, kind of, like, weird, like, yeah, I would say some of the best logos, though, are, like, simple. These logos were literally, like, oh, they're they're, horrible. Wit, they're word art. You know what I mean? So if you're going to be, like, the cracking aces, like, I don't know, make it just, like, simple and a couple A's on it because you don't have anything. Like, don't go to Microsoft Word and go to, like, word art and, like, type it no. in and then just pull that down. Dude, I think the aces one was, like, or one of them was a golf ball, like, screaming. Like, ah! It's like the screaming Dude, the shirts, bullets or the something. Gear, like if they have to wear those shirts, I think people are pulling out of the lift door. I mean, some of it is <laughs> worst gear in the world. But dude, if this wasn't Saudi back, and we talked this a million times, if it wasn't, right. if it wasn't what it is, this would be the greatest idea in golf because our guys would be playing in the PJ Tour, and then they'd also go and play in the season long eight event thing where they're part of a team. We'd be going fucking bananas right. at what guys got drafted for which teams. If Max Homo was playing against Kevin Kisner, Max Homo was drafted to the aces and Kisner was drafted to the birdies. And we're like, holy shit, next week's a fucking golf event, whatever they, the name would be. Right. Hopefully like Ville, the Ville golf event. And we'd be like, holy shit. Like it's, it's, it's season time, team time. The next two months, we're going crazy for team golf. It'd be amazing. Right. It's just, just these fucking guys PGA are killing PGA journalists. Global tour, honestly. Like if it was just like the right. PGA global tour and they cut down the events to 35. So they had an extra 12 events that they could just bake in the calendar. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if the PGA tour just starts this and like that is the off season tournaments go just down. Steal it. Then, yeah. Steal the idea. Right. It's out there. People know just it. Just take it. Mm -hmm. 
The problem is I don't think this money's going away. Therefore, I don't think Live Golf's going to go right. away. I think they're going to have to kind of partner with them. And we again, we get into this with Billy. So I kind of want it all to be able to breathe there. But you know, the 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 in Lurch, you kind of made this point very clear: is that the one of the great issues too with the Live Golf Tour is that there is no viable business plan. None. You cannot just throw already. $500 million at a handful of players. And that's not, that's a handful out of their 48. You cannot throw $2 billion is what the numbers, but they're not at something that's going to ha- has no TV deal. It's going to basically have no fans there. It's not going to in any way be able to justify the numbers that they're throwing out. So if you are starting something that they already know is not a viable business plan, that is inherently a problem. That is inherently something that is coming. <laughs> with bad intentions behind it. If it's not something that is in any way built with a, a, a goal of making money or even close to breaking even there's bad actors in that. And that's going to end poorly and is being driven for poor, bad reasons, which have been brought out many times. So that's a huge issue that's going on. That's why these numbers are so crazy. Um, it's just not sustainable, not in any way. So seeing where it goes, Will be fascinating. Seeing it as a real life thing is interesting. I have been obsessed with clicking on the pictures and the videos that I could see. There was a very like dystopian video of Phil at the pro am with like the Saudi um, private investment <laughs> fund guy and like a couple, and they're like, couldn't believe he was playing with taking them. a picture, and it was so scary. It was it was legit scary watching the, the video i felt so uncomfortable this one like english dude's like can you guys move like you're in our oh. way and the way he said it was like oh, if those reporters don't move someone there's bloodshed like there was like t- talk about having good golf course etiquette if you don't have good golf course etiquette on live golf you better watch your fucking back <laughs> it man, was because like those guys are coming for bad you. it was a bad video and that came, but i was heebie-jeebies that i had to watch I was like i can't believe this is a real that's phil fucking mickelson the thumbs up guy just it's won crazy. the pga it's last year time. like there he is out there with these guys with like the bad guys and it was it was it was so weird to watch it's i'm gonna tune in when i can to some of this stuff over the weekend because i just need to see what it looks like um, and yet I get it. I get people going over there for a ton of money. So it's kind of cool that they're doing new stuff. And like, like you said, when you're, if it was somebody else, if it was the, if it was the barstool new world golf tour and we were drafting people, we had Phil Mickelson up there with an iPad trying to decide who to welcome to his new team. Like we'd be gung ho for it over the moon. So, so there's so many moving pieces. I thought Justin Thomas We'll put that audio in now. Look, like people are entitled to choose as they wish. You know, it's like I don't dislike DJ now. I don't think he's a bad dude. I don't I'm not going to treat him any differently. It's like he's entitled to choose as he wish. And I think that the day and age that we live in now, it's just so negative that I mean, you see it in everything, you know, sport, politics, whatever it is. It's like if you disagree with someone, you just feel that you're entitled to, like, hate them and talk bad about them and just bash their decision when everybody's entitled to their own opinion. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't make him a bad person. Now I'm, I'm disappointed and I wish that he and others wouldn't have done it, but that's their decision. You know, uh, I've said it all along. It's like guys can do as they wish. If they want to go, they can go. If they want to stay, they can stay selfishly. I think, and I know that the PGA tour is the, is the best place to play in the world. And, um, you know, it's just, the, the decision is theirs. And, uh, it is what it is, but I just I wish that it would take away or I wish it wouldn't be taking away from the great storylines and things that are going on on a tour that's been around for a very long time and can and is in the one of the best places it's ever been. And, um, it, you know, it's just a bummer that those guys won't be a part of it. Justin Thomas had, in my opinion, one of the one of the best takes was, was just like, yeah, I don't agree with it. Um, but I, am I going to hate DJ now? No. And he said, you know, we're so inclined to feel entitled to have hate for people that we disagree with now, when in reality, we're all entitled to have different opinions and make different decisions. Um, and that's not going to affect my relationship with other people. So it is what it is, even if I don't agree with them going over. Um, so his take was phenomenal. That's going viral. Uh, the United States Golf Association Association came out predictably and said they're not going to uh, block people from playing in this year's U.S. Open. Um, they use the reasoning of 
these rules and parameters were set. We are a true open, meaning anybody who qualifies as the parameters that we set uh, is, is eligible to play in our championship. Those have been set for a while. We're not going to change them after the fact. So anyone who uh, was was qualified and eligible to play is still going to be able to play. That's not going to change. So I imagine the RNA will do the same thing, uh, which means the next two major championships aren't going to be affected, um, which, again, I think we all pretty much expected. If anybody does not have anything else, um, I'm ready for, you know, uh, interview that I think people have been waiting for a very long time for. Yeah, so I got Billy. nothing else. We we did talk a lot about there. the whole thing with Billy, so it'll right. we'll we'll cover it more in depth if uh, if that's what people want. We talk about it a lot with Billy, which obviously has an interesting perspective on it because he's on the PJ Tour, so people will like. Yeah, and that. he's on the and he's in he's on like the players uh, board. Is it like what? what is yeah, he he's on that with with that? Kevin Kisner. He's on there, so they are you know a select group of people. I believe voted by their peers who essentially represent the players on the PGA tour in talks with the PGA tour about all any and all issues that come up. Which is pretty crazy that like, you know, we're able to kind of talk with the guy who's in those meetings about what his temperature on this whole thing is. I know he's been pretty public about his opinion on everything. So it's not like he's breaking any news on this show, but it was pretty cool to hear him kind of break down his thoughts when you know that like, he's giving it right to the PGA tour. Yeah. He is on the player advisory council, also known as the pack for 2022. That is Patrick Cantlay, Paul Casey, Austin cook, Joel Damon, Harry Higgs, Billy Horschel, Russell Knox, Brooks Kepka, Justin Lauer, Peter Mulnati, Graham McDowell, Mav McNeely, Trey uh, Molinex, Rom Webb Simpson, and Will Zalatoris. So I think that's 20 names um, that are, are 16 names, 16 member, pack uh he's on that so he kind of alludes to that and, and discusses some of the things that he's brought up to the tour and and we get into the entire live stuff we gotta talk about skrill first skrill is the best digital wallet for gamblers because it was built for gamblers lurch you should pay attention to this uh sophisticated gamblers use it to manage their bankroll whether they're playing games like poker or betting on their favorite sports love poker shout out to nate and the uh crack and aces crew they manage their bankroll using the wallet yeah they got uh um World Series of Poker going on right now. Uh, the General, Smitty, and Nate. So go follow all their stuff. Love Kraken Aces. As a poker guy that played forever, I respect that they're just grinding their asses off on uh, on the poker beat and World Series of Poker. I was in Vegas last couple of days. People were kind of humming about the World Series of Poker, so that kind of fits right now. Go check out. Shout out to Nate. Shout out to Smitty. Shout out to Skrill because they manage their bankroll using the wallet, the Skrill wallet, which allows them to pay instantly and securely. It's payments without limits. Basically, you can access your bankroll with instant deposits and withdrawals and also draw the cash using your prepaid card. This gives you access to your bankroll wherever you are in the entire world. Uh, This week only, first 20 customers who sign up, so hurry up at skrill.com slash barstool. That's S-K-R-I-L-L dot com slash barstool. And complete your account verification. Get a $100 Skrill bonus. First 20 customers, skrill.com slash barstool. Complete your account verification. Get a hundred dollars Skrill bonus. Terms and conditions apply. That's Skrill.com slash Barstool. Here is Billy Horschel for ninety minutes. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by the most recent winner on the PGA Tour, seven-time winner. Just won a big one, Jack's Place, the Memorial. Uh, he won the 2014 FedEx Cup, which I want to talk about uh, how all that goes. We've heard about Wad Wednesday from Kiz, so I want to talk a lot about that. But Billy Horschel joins the show for the first time. Congrats on the win, and welcome to the show, Billy. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. This is going to be very interesting. I was I was <laughs> going to say, say – Well, why do you say that, Billy? <laughs> uh, I think there's some comments you guys have said in the past that I, 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 I would have – say that are probably aren't correct about me so but hey everyone has their own opinion so i'm not here to change anyone's opinion i'll give you a different perspective of me than what you guys have of me now and then if you guys still have the same feelings so be it that's all good answer i think that's fair i I think that's super fair fair. i I would say i would say we probably owe billy horse an apology i on this show we (laughs) Very, we very frequently blur the lines between trying to make people laugh and trying to give our opinions out there. We probably don't realize how much it can affect people. So I would say we probably owe you an apology. I'll apologize for some of the things I've said about you. I don't need an apology, but if you guys, if if that's what you guys want to do, all good. (laughs) 
here's the thing. Here's what I'll say. And then I'll let, I know Frankie probably wants to go because I'm sure he said some things too. But I was thinking about this because we obviously knew we were going to have you on. And, and we've definitely said some things that are, you know, we've just seen clips of you on the golf course and then we've reacted on this podcast. It's kind of, that's kind of our MO. And the way that I would thought, I had thought about it on the last show, we talked a lot about where the PJ Tour is headed. Obviously, this is an uh, interesting time for the game of golf and where it's going to be headed. And a big part of what we had talked about was basically we want golf to somehow get into the team sport aspect of everything because we're team sport guys, big hockey guys, football, basketball, the whole thing. And with those other sports, something that golf doesn't have is someone you root against. You're looking, you're rooting against the other team. Frankie hates the Rangers. You know, Lurch hates the Islanders and it goes that way with golf. There isn't that. And what we've tried to do on this show, I think, is kind of try to take the team sport aspect of other sports and bring it to golf where because for the most part, you root for every single golfer. We talk about that a lot on this show where when a guy wins, when you win or when whoever wins each week, when Sam Burns wins, we're like, yay, that's great. That's fantastic. And there's really there isn't that team sport thing where you're like I don't want that person to win or I'm rooting against that person so then we get to you and we've just seen clips in context (laughs) out of context whatever on the golf course where you're going crazy and as golf fans who want it to be more you know where you root for somebody and root against somebody we just pick things that you know somebody who's polarizing whether it be you or whoever else and we root against that person based on those couple of clips and we because we want it to be more like our guy versus that guy. That would be my explanation. Hey, and, and I, I appreciate that. And I, I would agree, you know, um, <clears throat> listen, I've made my, I made an idiot of myself on the golf course over my 13 years on the PJ tour. I've done some idiotic things and made myself look silly, but uh, you know, the thing I've tried to at least, and I said it maybe a month ago at Zurich or two months, I don't really care if someone likes me or doesn't like me or doesn't, what doesn't like what I do on the golf course. Uh, the only thing I will say to that is that you're seeing me in a very competitive atmosphere in a very vulnerable state, um, trying to play the best golf I can, trying to win tournaments. You know, when things aren't going well, you know, everyone's different. My fire burns a lot hotter and, and a lot faster than everyone else. And, you know, people react differently. So, you know, if that's not what, you know, you want to see, or, or that's not, you know, something, you're attracted to or, or like, then that's fine. Like, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, but to judge, like I've always said, like, if you judge me by who, by what you see on TV or what you see on the golf course and expect that to be my character and expect me to come off that way, you know, when I'm off the golf course, and then that's where I think people get me wrong because off the golf course in a regular setting, you know, I'm a, you know, I think I'm a good guy. I like to have a good time. I mean, I was born and raised around, you know, you know, I've said it many times and whether people have heard not blue collared, middle class, low middle class parents. One of my parents had a job multiple times growing up. I mean, my dad played rugby for 30 years. Those rugby guys know how to have fun time. And so, you know, uh, I'm just a ultra competitive guy when it comes to winning and losing. And and so, like I said, I, I, I don't fault anyone for judging, you know, having an opinion of me for what they see on the golf course. Yeah, no, I think I'll go. Um, You know, I have a kind of a crazy history with you because I just call it straight from the hip. I shoot from the hip. That's just how I am. And I never knew what that that really meant. And I didn't know like how high powered I was until like in my brain, I meant how how fucking my, my mental state was always going so fast until I met Dr. Brett McCabe, who has now been my guy for this new series called Fixing Frankie. Where I went down to Georgia, without that, Alabama, and I met with him. We sat down. We went on the golf course. We talked about a lot of things, and he really, almost in some way, compared my mental state on the golf course sort of to you, which was really stunning. Where he's like, "Dude, you just want to win, and you're so go go go. And when it doesn't go your way, you like have to figure out why it's not happening, and you're like more emotional than the other person, and you can see it on your face." And I think to myself, like, I'm a baseball player my whole life, like, growing up. I, and I was so used to, like, if you fly out to the third baseman with bases loaded, you take your bat and you throw it towards the dugout. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's just normal. Like, he's just angry. But in golf, when someone does the slightest even similarity to that, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, that's fucking crazy. That guy should not be doing that. You should be, like, kind of buttoned up. And never, let's all, like, be country club here. 
So I've really struggled with that. I think a lot of times I like, I'm very self-deprecating and the fact that we are similar in that aspect, like I think because I make fun of myself, I call myself a psychopath and a, and a lunatic. <laughs> when I see someone doing things the same way, I'm like, I feel comfortable being like, yeah, fucking Billy Orson's a lunatic out there. Like guys tossing golf, you know what I mean? Like, cause I know I do the same thing. So it's kind of like, I feel like we are, we come, we're cut from the same cloth when it comes to like, we just wear our emotions on our sleeve. And I've come around on the fact that like, that's a really cool thing to have in this game. I've talked to Brett a lot about it. I'm like, why can't I just like, why can't I adapt what other guys have where they're just able to just like take it and go. And he's like, because that's not who you are. That's not how you tick. Like, let's find the game for Frankie Borelli and his brain. And let's just do that. And it's really helped me like see that like all these guys, I used to make fun of Jordan Spieth about the way he would like go through his process until I met Brett. I'd be like, this guy's a fucking, like, he's talking to himself and he's yelling at himself. He's slapping his hand. Like, how does anyone think this guy's a normal human being? And then all of a sudden you realize, like. He's not. He's still not a normal human being. He's not. (laughs) I guess once you actually put some thought into it and, like, you actually try and do it yourself, you realize that that's just your way of, like, trying to achieve a really, really hard task. And everyone has, like, a million different ways of doing it. And I genuinely, genuinely never really saw that side until I tried to do it myself. So I yeah. guess that is an apology. I mean, it's not really an apology because I think it's just a learning experience. But yeah, I mean, I've heard the best things about you ever, and we'll get to that. Like I said, I I I, I didn't come on this to get apologies yeah. or anything. You know, bit, obviously, <laughs> if if you guys know me, I like a little banter back and forth, and I'm gonna yeah. bust you guys' chops for things you guys said about me, and you guys can bust my chops for things <laughs> I've done. That's who I am. That's what I love. That's the way I've always been. And yeah. you know, I played baseball for 13 years, and it was great. I love being that emotional guy. I mean. You know, I said it on the Pat McAfee show today. I I had a no-hitter going, you know, when I was playing junior ball. And we were in, I don't know, the sixth inning. And left field would drop the easy pop fly. And I ripped him a new one in the dugout. (laughs) Like, and I made him cry. And I felt, and then I felt bad because, you know, he was crying. But I was like, you just lost my no-hitter. Like, what are you doing? Like, come on, that's an easy catch. Like, I mean, you know, it's just the way I've always been. And it's funny because, like, my dad and my parents aren't that way at all. Uh, my dad's more reserved, maybe my mom's a little bit more, uh, um, you know, a quicker emotional person, but, you know, my dad's more reserved. And uh, so it's funny how, you know, when you see, meet my parents, you, you know, it doesn't come across right. Like maybe I was adopted or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. I even said to Brett, I'm like, do you like, when you see Billy get out there and get frustrated with himself, I'm like, do you ever like want to talk to him and be like, that's not what you're supposed to do? He goes, no, I fucking love it. He yeah, loves he, he tells it. it all the time. Don't change. Don't change. You do you. He don't loves worry. it. He's like, Billy's yeah. being Billy. And why would you want Billy not to be Billy? He's the 10th right golfer yeah. on the planet. Bill, Billy's doing something right. So at the end of the day, it may, it really did. It's like one plus one equals two, man. You get angry. The guy plays well. It's just like, that's, that's how you go. It is. It is. And, you know, sometimes I wish it wasn't that way because I do make myself look like an idiot. But as <laughs> I, as I've always said on the PJ tour, I'm not a robot. I never love watching golf when guys are robots. Like I love watching Tiger because he always, you know, the fist pumping and everything. But when he was pissed, he was tossing clubs at the bag and dropping drop f bombs. And I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And uh, I mean, quick little story: I get I get my card through Q School 2009 right after college. Um, after you do Q School, you usually have like a day or two of like going through this rookie orientation with a PGA Tour and. Andy Pazner at the time, they, they each talk about certain things. And Andy's talking about, hey, we want you guys to be authentic. We want you to be your own. You know, you know, we don't want robots. We want you guys to really, co- you know, we realize that's how you connect with the fans, being authentic and, and showing your emotions and everything. And so um, first events, like four weeks later in Sony, and um, I'm right on the cut line. I'm on the 15th hole, dog left, short par four. And I hit this three on, I hook it hard left, and it's almost OB. And I'm like, God darn it, Billy. And I was walking back and I sort of took my club and took a swipe at the T marker and the T marker exploded and busted. And I was like, Oh my God. So next week I get to Palm Springs and um, my manager's assistant says, Hey, Andy Pazner needs to talk to you. And Andy's like, Hey Billy, we heard you broke two T markers. And I'm like, no, I only broke one. I didn't break the other one. <laughs> you said. I only broke one. I promise you. And, I, and I'm, you know, he's going on and I explained to him what happened. I said, listen, I wasn't trying to break the T marker. The T marker looked metal. It was silver. It was shiny. It looked like a metal T marker. I thought it was just going to ding, but it just exploded. <laughs> and, and I, and he's like, yeah, well, you know, blah, blah. And then I, 
then I remembered in my head real quickly, I said, Andy, I thought you just told us like three weeks ago, you want us to be like authentic and not be robots and like show emotion. And he pretty much was like, uh, you got me there. I'll let you <laughs> off this time. So, yeah, <laughs> I've been yeah. that way since day one on the PGA Tour and I'll be that way since I end my tour career. And it's, you know, it. I guess a, um, I was thinking about it a ton, too. I've been thinking about it a lot, like, ever since, really, the, the Phoenix Open. We chatted a little bit. And like Trent said, we know we're going to have you on the show. And it's when we started this thing in 2017, you probably were a little bit of, like, a victim in our case of – we. Were I know trying I was. Find, I know what you guys said. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to, like <laughs> – we're trying to find things that become like our things, right? Like guys yeah. that fucking were and people and all of a sudden we're tweet like, oh, yeah, fuck Billy Horschel. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, yeah, that's like one of our things. We're not Billy Horschel guys. And we're kind of leaning in. Then you realize when you see people and you meet them. And I'll never forget when you walked after the 16th hole over 17T <laughs> at Phoenix Open, you kind of bust my balls a little bit because you're with kids and everybody's yelling ain't no hobby. And you're kind of like, you going to get any of that stuff on sale yet or what, Riggs? And I'm like – fuck this guy just like he's busting my balls he gets it and you start to feel like shit a little bit and like yeah, it's just a normal person that you basically use to shit on to gather our following never thinking that's that you're like that's a pga tour player who makes millions of dollars he's fine who cares and in reality <laughs> that's just not the case and like we're now at a point when you talk to folks like you so i guess like the leading with an apology i think is is very very warranted because of that i think it's cool that you've always been cordial with us when we've been in events that you chatted us up at times when you could and so now having you on and talking and and it's almost cool in a way where it's like you were aware of all that stuff because it makes us kind of face the music a little bit which we don't get to do very often a lot of times we just get to stand on top of the hill and just fire fucking shots and cannons at people and it never really matters and i think it's probably good <laughs> for us to be able to face the music and it is you know if tom brady goes nuts on the on the sideline throwing ipads at people everyone's like that's the goat he's fired up let's go and same thing with tiger if tiger's throwing clubs everybody's like yeah he's the best that's why he wins and it's pretty unfair if you're doing it or you do it occasionally that you get shot. I mean, I'd do it. I would look like the biggest idiot in the world. I'd do it. I'm trying to break like 87 <laughs> and I'm doing it. You're trying to win like $10 million prizes. So, um, so anyways, it's, it's Listen, I'll, I'll give you guys credit. At least you guys show your faces around tournaments. I mean, I've said this before on, on social media, Brandon O'Shane Lee never comes down and walks to range at all after all the <laughs> you know, shit he does on people's on a regular basis. You know, I've had my, you know, two bits with him before and, you know, I get along great with Brandel, but, you know, he, you know, he sits up in that studio and, and says what he says. And, you know, he, he looks on it based on a camera or video, but never comes down and talks to players. And there was an instance a couple of years ago at Bay Hill, probably three or four years ago. He walked out after like a late round on Friday. I took off late Friday. I was, it was me and Padre hitting balls. And I think like earlier that maybe a couple months ago, I call him like, you know, like, um, a ghost like he just never is on the range he never comes down and talks to players and everything and then he comes down and he, he says like who's a ghost now motherfucker and <laughs> uh and i said yeah look how many people on the range it's me and padre you know you're you know you're big man now to come out on the range and, and, and walk the range when no one's on it and i said you know you've moved on from being a ghost. You're like Bigfoot. You're like, you're seen, but we're not sure if you're actually real or not. So <laughs> the thing yeah, you no, don't we... hear when we're at tournaments is that like, when we'll see you, we'll be like, all right, there's Billy. Like hopefully he doesn't punch Frankie in the face. You're like, let's yeah. just, let's try and keep it moving. <laughs> but yeah, we're brave. We're super brave for showing up at the tournament. Like one of the things yeah, that hurts you, but also is a us. really good thing for you is that you look like Christian Bale and American psycho. So for me, oh, that, yeah. That, I mean, it's just way too much of a comparison. You look just fucking like him. It's scary. Um, so that's something I've said in the past. And the other thing I will say it's is I want thing. you to know that we've gotten our share of people shitting on us on the internet. So we're all in the same boat. <laughs> I mean, people tell me to kill myself every single day. So I mean, because oh, wow. I can't, because I can't fucking, because I can't chip a, a golf ball. So I mean, we know what it's like to get things thrown at us. And you know, you just kind of yeah. move on with the flow. So we get it. You, you do. just kind of, you, you just do you. I mean, you, you think people love us in every single walk of life? No oh. chance. They want to take us down oh. every step we get. So it's like, Everyone's shooting shots and we're all taking them and we're all moving. We're all just, what is it? Rising tides raises all ships. That's what we're doing with Billy right now. We're just moving up. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it's obviously been a few days since he won the Memorial. There's a lot of chatter in golf right now about um, prestige, legacy versus just money. 
uh, something like the Memorial Tournament. I mean, you've you've won this is your seventh win before, but for you growing up, being a golf nut, dreaming about winning golf tournaments, what does it really mean outside of the two point one six million dollars to to win a tournament like uh, you know Jack's tournament, the Memorial? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for me, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have a really good career, both financially and success, success, uh, successfully on the golf course with wins and everything. Um, you know, now it's it's to the point where, you know, I, you want to be remembered in the game of golf and you have to win the right events to be remembered. And I've been fortunate enough, you know, to win the FedEx Cup. And then, you know, I won a match play. I won the BMW uh, PGA Championship over in Wentworth last year in the Ad Jacks. You know, I'm winning some some really prestigious events um, that people remember the winners of. And, you know, the thing that's left off that, you know, that CV list is, is a major or, or hopefully multiple majors. And and hopefully I can 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 accomplish that here before my time's done. But, you know, you know, for me, I've really never played for the money. Um, obviously, I'm very aware of, you know, I, I live my life. And if I don't if I don't make money, I don't have a great lifestyle and, you know, but I've been fortunate enough to do very well, but it's, it's about the competition. It's about winning. It's about people remembering who you are and, you know, do people know who the number seven guy is on the career money list? No, I don't think so. I don't know who that is, but they remember who got the, like, they remember who's won seven majors or who's the seventh most, you know, all time major winning player. You know, they remember people who've won tournaments um and you know dj's already a hall of famer 24 wins two majors jt's a hall of famer um roy mcroy's gonna be a hall of famer you know to be to have a chance to maybe be considered a hall of famer one day would be you know is, is what i play this game for now um and, you know in the money like i said I, i'm fortunate enough to win a lot of money on the golf course fortunate enough to make a lot of money off the golf course so the money aspect isn't isn't uh you know as relevant um as much anymore as, as just winning the right events. So, you know, honestly, so people can remember my name. That's all I really care, care about. Is, uh, in terms of, it's, it's very clear, you know, how much sort of legacy prestige matters to you, which I think makes sense. And I would assume that a lot of guys at your level, I mean, you're, I think 11th in the world right now, that's probably pretty similar. We've heard Rory say it a lot that like, he's at a point where it's not about money. It's about trying to win tournaments for you. Is there a difference in, PGA Tour events, the Memorial versus another event, or is it sort of all PGA Tour events and then majors? You know, it's, you know, I'll just break it down. It's, it's the four majors. It's the Players' Championship, BMW PGA Championship over uh, in Wentworth. You got the WGCs. Obviously, there's only two of them now. And then you look at, like, the events. You look at, like, winning the Genesis now, any event that Tiger's name's on. You're winning Arnold Palmer's event. You're winning Jack Nicklaus. Those are – those are those tier events. And then, and then I think, you know, this is not nothing against any other PJ tour event, but it, it, the legacy of winning, you know, the John Deere isn't as much <laughs> as yes, winning Billy. like Memorial or Arnold Palmer. This guy's and, dialed and John in. Deere's, John Deere is a great event and it's a great Point. sponsor, but You're dead, I mean, Trent. You're fucking dead. You know, I, I, I just don't think, I mean, and it's, it's like I said, it's, it's just the way I look at it. It's the way I look at it. I mean, all adds up. If you win PGA, PGA tournaments, player. all those tournaments add up, but yeah. the ones that are going to be remembered are the ones that were the, you know, the really prestigious the important ones, ones and the legacy yeah. ones at first. And then they add up the rest of them to get the 50. It's just something about that I, green. I, we get it. I don't know if I apologize during my <laughs> rambling answer at the beginning, but I want to take it back if I did. That apology is no longer valid and it's, it's void. <laughs> Did they tell you to say that? That part no, about the John Deere no, Classic? No, it's just how he feels, no. dude. No, it's just, bottom that, of the list. Dude's talking from the heart. That's mm -hmm. tough to hear. That's tough coming to hear. Right, but coming right from the heart. Listen, What's, we have uh, forty-seven events on the PGA Tour. It's tough to make every forty-seven events great. Also, it truly one of them's is. Gonna be the PGA last. Tour does a the PGA Tour does a great job of 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 supporting all these events and making them special. But at the end of the day, there's 47, and not every 47 event is great. And, or it's going to be the legacy of, like, winning uh, a memorial, winning the Genesis with Tiger's name involved, or winning a major or the Players' Championship. It's just the way it is. But you know what? I think they're very happy holding the event and having a great event that they have, and whatever whoever their champion is. I mean, Steve Shooker's won the John Deere several times. Zach, Zach Johnson's won the John Deere several times. But 
Zach Johnson's not remembered for winning a John Deere. He's remembered for winning the Masters and Open Championship. Steve Stricker is not remembered for winning a John sure. Deere. Steve Stricker is remembered for making a ton of putts and, you know, one. winning and being a killer <laughs> in the Ryder Cups and everything else. He hasn't just won a use, major, but. Just use my own guy against me. It's like, wow. There's, Jordan Spieth. There's a, Jordan Spieth's not remembered for winning a John Deere. Yeah. You know? I mean, Jordan that was Spieth. the launching pad, to, though. It, it launched a career, pretty a good pad. career. And you know what? And you know what? Those tournaments are what, and those tournaments love it because they they can say, "Hey, listen, Jordan Spieth launched his career by winning this event." But I guarantee you, if, if you ask a lot of people, "Hey, what event did Jordan win first? I don't think they're going to remember John Deere. That if they do, tournament. hey, touche, touche. <laughs> but at the same time, those events, you know, they know where they stand, um, and and they play to a different category to play play to a different way to get players enticing them to come play. And by Jordan Spieth winning there, his first win, that's huge for John Deere. They can always say, hey, Jordan Spieth won his first event here. I would also say that I would say like all the the tractor team markers are pretty sweet, but you hate team markers. They are. (laughs) Can't break those. (laughs) (laughs) If your putting game is unstable, grab yourself Mm -hmm. TaylorMade Spider GT and inject a dose of stability into your game. We got our custom TaylorMade Spider GTs within the last few weeks. It's maybe the coolest single piece of anything I've ever owned in my life. I just look at it sometimes. Yeah, the you know the customization on the website is absolutely insane. You can go on my Spider GT, I believe, is the um, customization area of TaylorMade Golf's website. It's crazy. I made mine all blacked out from the tip of the grip down to the um, face. And then I put a little bit of a Islanders twang on it with the blue and the orange accents. It's really cool. Uh, Riggs is showing his on the YouTube version. It's as good as it can get. I mean, it's just a showstopper. When you show up to the golf course and you have that, everyone's like, hold on now. Like, where'd you get that thing? They didn't even know the Spire GT's out yet. Half the people I'm showing. So. Go and check it out. It's obviously a little bit of a pricey golf club when it comes to putters, but I'm telling you right now, you go to any sort of store that you're going to get fit on and you hit this thing, the ball jumps and it feels pure. It's as good of a putter as you can get for an amateur golfer. I'm telling you right now, it just makes putting easier. Yeah, it's like a cheat card. It's great. I mean, basically, it's, uh, it is. Oh, I, like I jump in card. there. A little live Archie. from Italy. Yeah, but no, like I remember talking to the putting guy just quickly on it. Like they're trying to move all of the weight outside of the middle, which is crazy. I think they're like 82% out of the middle. I think, Frankie, we might have had the conversation together. But it honestly keeps it online. I got it for like one second, looked at it. It's honestly like an engineering miracle that they put that thing together. It kind of looks like a spaceship, but it's really awesome to look at. Um, Yeah, and the thing's great. So, I mean, obviously got plenty of putting issues. I'm really hoping this might help solve the bill of goods. True. True. I don't know that the, even this thing could fix you, but it's close. So go to barstoolsports.com slash tailormade shop spider GT to create your own. Use the promo code barstool at checkout for free shipping. That's barstoolsports.com slash tailormade. Uh, Billy, I got a question for you. Now, th- things are right. hot right now in, in the world of golf, right? There's, uh, there's other leagues popping up. There's people pledging their allegiances and all this stuff. I want to ask you a question, and you can answer as carefully as you want to in this hot climate, but being such a team guy and and uh, and you know a high powered competitive guy, do you yourself have any like wants for the PJ Tour to adopt more team golf, or are you happy with the way the format currently is? We had a long discussion on the last podcast on if people really, the average person, do they care about the tournament that's on from Thursday to Sunday? Because we're just so like. Turn on ESPN. What's the biggest game tonight? We got NBA on. We got MLB on. We got NHL on. Like, are we really watching the John Deere on Friday? Are we watching all the Memorial every single week, every single shot? Are we really doing that? Like, but if there was a way to keep up with like standings and stats and team aspect and guys meeting you on the green, being like, Billy just got us into this. I I genuinely had a, I really enjoy the fact that we could move towards a team aspect. I would love to know where you find, where you fall on that. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, playing a – obviously, we got the Zurich Classic, which is a great event. I love Zurich. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to win it as an individual, as a team. Um, and I would bet that Sam Burns and I were probably going to win it in the next five years, um, in my opinion. Because uh, we're that right good that of a team. Hold on, hold on. Yep, hold go on, right on. ahead. Okay. When when yeah. it happens, you, I set it right here on, on Barstool. Um, <laughs> no but, uh, you know, I, I think 
I think there is room in golf to make changes, to make it more enticing, more interesting to the golf public. I, I do think, you know, I said this to a tour, you know, a lot of stuff I, you know, why I have no issue saying things in public is, is I tell the tour what I feel all the time. I think we have way too many events as it is. 47 events in a year is too many. I think if we could cut that back, you know, 10, 10, maybe 12, and you have somewhere around the low 30s, you know, I think that makes you have an off season. You you have some other enticing events and some team aspects of it. But at the end of the day, you know, golf's always been that individual sport and you compare yourself against everything else. You know, baseball, you need nine players to play baseball. You can't play with seven. You can't play with four. You know, they remember you need nine. And so that's how, you know, it works. You know, in, in football, you need, um, what is it, 11 players on the field, um, you know, to make a football team. You know, if, if one team has seven, one team has 11, I'm sorry, the team with 11 is always going to win. Um, but, you know, that's how they compare themselves. But golf is so, one, you don't need another teammate to play the game of golf. You can play it by yourself. And so I think it's great if we do have more team aspects involved somehow. But I think the public wants to know, or at least I would want to know, you know, where does these other guys stand um, as an individual? Because, you know, if Roy McIlroy, myself, you know, let's throw Cameron Young in there and let's throw, you know, who's another young guy like a Wills out, you know, you know I'm saying Wills out towards, let's just say um, like Cameron Tringali, you know, if we're winning all the time as a team, well, who's really the better player, depending on how you figure out that format, yeah. you know, is, is Roy really the best player? Am I the best player? Is Cameron the best player? If you're not having an individual format involved as well. Um, so that's, you know, that's my take on it. Um, I do, but I do think there is room to, to sort of, you know, expand a little bit and, and try to make golf a little bit more entertaining and a little bit more where people can get behind maybe more than one player, you know, make it get behind three guys, four guys at a, you know, a couple of times a year where there truly is a team aspect. And, you know, and then, you know, you know that's, that's, that's sort of my little two yeah. take on it. Yeah, I mean, the game's growing. There's no doubt about it. I mean, everyone's playing. It's just, I just, with our generation, the generation that's coming up behind mm-hmm. us, it's like you want, you want some, no, no one wants ev- to root for everyone. That's just not the way the world oh, I agree. works. So it's I agree. like, we need those packs of guys to be able to root for, because like, I hate just turning it on on Sunday and being like, yay to whoever won. It's just so boring well, at that point. It's like, let me ask you this. I mean, I'm a golfer. I watch a ton of golf. I probably watch more golf than anyone in the PGA tour. Um, I mean, and I know every guy out in the PJ Tour. There's guys that I want to win. There's guys I root for yeah. every week. And then yeah. there's guys that are they're competing against that I don't want that guy to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll be on record to say it. There's guys I, I, I'd rather have the other guy win. So to say, you know, it's, you could easily have, you know, your own team where you have, you have your six guys that you just love to pull for and everyone else you can just hate. Yeah, I mean, we so. kind of do that already. And you know what? Gambling's really helped with that too. The Barstool Sportsbook, <laughs> Barstool Sportsbook has made like gambling coming into golf has made golf so much more enjoyable. I agree. You have to watch us when we're during a major, or whenever we like live stream us watching golf. When we are on a single guy, like we were on that JT versus Alatoris playoff, and living and dying with every single shot because you've got money on one side. And when one guy hits one to the wrong side of the green, you're going banana. So yes, that, that has brought it. And I love that aspect. You know what? And there's one other side to the gambling aspect that it's, it's been around and it hasn't, I don't think it's caught hold here in America. Uh, my stats guy, Mark Horton used to gamble for a living and you know, he would bet like he would have a player, and depending on where that player hit a shot on a green, he would either like take him or lay him. He would sell him because of the percentages, oh, you know, wow. knowing their percentage of Jeez. up and down. Like, hey, this guy's not going to get it up and down. I'm going to lay him. And, you know, you're, you're betting on per shot. Which don't I tell think, Lurch that because Lurch is yeah. going to be giving out tickets. One of the worst gamblers of all time. <laughs> I also don't have the stats. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm telling the stats you, are a nightmare. You, next time you guys are at an event and my, my stats guy is there, you should really take like 20, 30 minutes and he can He'll show you some wallet. things that, you know, that you guys would find even more, I think, interesting okay. in the, in the gambling aspect. And, um, love that. you know, obviously if you know the numbers, you know, the stats, you know, where guys, you know, can't, you know, they hit it in a certain spot, like two for 12 out of guys have gotten up and down. 
you know, you have those numbers and maybe the other guy's not smart enough to look that up or know that right away. You can, you can make money that way. Oh yeah. You should have seen us at, uh, for Augusta. Will the guy hit the fairway? We were betting the 11th hole. Like it was, and every single time it's like, is this guy going to take a drive or is this guy going to take a three way? We didn't really know any of that stuff. So and every time the guy steps into the tee, you're like, no, you're going crazy. Dude. And they act like, they act like you guys are supposed to hit every fairway at Augusta ever. And I'm like, I get that they're wide and it's pretty wide, but if the ball rolls a foot into the little first cut, you just miss the fairway and lose. Yeah. So guys are like, guys are like three to one to hit the fairway. And you're like, oh, obviously take it. Roast driver 331 down the middle and it rolls a foot into the rough and you just yeah. lose and you're it's Dude, every to hit fairway bet has been like minus 250 and, and worse in odds for the yeah. life of us betting it it's just it's the worst bet ever because <laughs> it's it's like uncontrollable at some point once it hits the fairway it's almost uncontrollable like even you guys can't even control where it's going to roll out to so it's fucking it's a crazy bet the, the only way the only good ones are when the, the fairways have we've had a ton of rain and the ball just hits and stops just stops yeah <laughs> Yeah, right. We need to lock in on that. We need to lock yeah. in on that. I was thinking it's interesting. Like Billy is probably going to have a very different opinion on the team aspect than we are because that's what he's known his whole life. He's 35 years old. Been playing golf since he's young for 30 something years. That's literally what he's known as like individualistic approach. You got to learn to dominate and to be in that world and to crush. So like for us as fans, like pretty much all of us picked up golf later in life or after kind of our glory days of high school athletics were over. And so for us, we're kind of like team, team, team. And we play a team match every Saturday with our boys where again, where you're like, no, no, I boys, I worked really hard to get to this point to win individual. <laughs> this is what I do. I want to win individual mm-hmm. tournaments. So I imagine it's pretty different in terms of team golf. I mean, I remember 2014 Ryder cup, you got, you got snubbed last year for the for the Ryder Cup. I know you got snubbed. Is that something team golf wise? I mean, now you're you're I think you're eighth in the Presidents Cup standings. Is that something that's like a big um, goal for yours, desire of yours to get on some of these teams? Hey, yeah, yeah, you got it's, family. Uh, yeah, it's Colby. Uh, yeah, up, it's. Colby? Uh, hey, Colby. I would love to. You know, there's there's two things I haven't accomplished in my career, and that's um, you know win a major and make a team. And, you know, if I, if, if I could pick what team to make, it would be a Ryder Cup team and it would be overseas because I just would – that would be, like, my yeah, ultimate you'd, dream. You'd That's where I there. feel like I would thrive the most. <laughs> yeah. um, it would really, Gator really claps, be the, Gator the claps best. in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, we would be and big so, Horschel guys. If you infiltrating some other country, we would go down <laughs> that. Huge. Huge. So that's 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 where I would love to do it. And so, like I said, I mean, if, if I'm able to make the President's Cup team this year, uh, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Cause I, listen, as much as I did say, I want to play in the visually, the team aspect is really cool when you're, when you guys all come together, trying to win, you know, a certain prize together, you're pulling for each other, you're rooting for each other. I mean, you just have to see what I, you know, what I've done in Walker cup and how crazy I was at the Walker cup team over and, and uh, Northern Ireland in 2007. I mean, <laughs> you know, I was the cheerleader. I had the pom poms out. I mean, I did everything you know, to support my, you know, the guys on the team. I mean, you know, I'm, I've, you know, as I've said before, I said, if I made the team, I mean, I would, I want to play every match, but if they said, Hey, Billy, you know, we need you to go deliver coffee to Tiger Woods on the seventh hole, man, that coffee would get out there faster than fucking lightning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, some spots may be opening up now in the future on the Ryder cup team. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah. I, it doesn't disappoint <laughs> me if that happens. <laughs> no, I imagine I imagine it wouldn't. I um I imagine, you know, you've mentioned Tiger a couple times and, and playing in the Genesis, his event, how that kind of stuff stands out. What is your relationship like with Tiger? Because I remember at Augusta when he showed up and the Tiger hype was crazy. You were one of the first guys that kind of dapped him up on the range in a video that went viral. What's your relationship like with Tiger? Tiger's been great to me um since I met him in 2009. He gave me a spot uh at his event at the, I think it was at t National at Congressional. I think that's what it was called. Uh, and this is why I thought this is, I mean, like I said, Tiger's been great. And, you know, everyone has an opinion about every player, but I can only tell you how someone treats me and how they treat the people around me. And he's been great with the people around me, with my family, with my wife uh, for many, many years. But 2009, I wanted to thank him for, for the sponsor exemption. Mark Steinberg said, hey, meet him you know, be here after his program. He's going to grab some dinner and then, or some lunch. And then before he does media, he'll be available. So he's talking to somebody um, and then he gets done. And so I go over and I say, Hey, Tiger, Billy Horschel, 
thank you so much for the sponsor exemption. It truly means a lot. And he goes, hey, you know, you've had an unbelievable career in college. Rattles off some stuff I've done in college and amateur golf. And just said, hey, you just keep doing what you did there. You'll be, you'll be just fine. And I walked away from there. I'm like, holy shit. Like, no one told him. You know, no one gave him, you know, yes, they said, hey, Billy Horse was going to come. But it wasn't like he had a five-minute conversation with his right with Steinberg rattling off everything I've done, before, you know, in college and amateur golf. Like, you know, he just had remembered that from, you know, whenever they told him, you know, when they were looking at sponsorship picks. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world at the time. And, and from there, you know, we've had a great relationship. Um, you know, I'm a little bit different. I, I don't really talk to him too much about golf. I don't ask him about, you know, how to handle certain situations or how to hit certain golf shots. You know, I just, uh, you know, I talked to him about his kids, his family. We talk about sports. You know, I bust his chops and he'll bust mine, uh, you know. But, you know, when it comes to golf, you know, he gets so many questions asked already from so many guys that, um, you know, at least early in the, my career, I didn't want to be that way uh, with him. But, you know, now I know if there was something golf-wise, golf-specific that I needed to uh, ask him, I know he would be, you know, be willing to offer up some advice. That's cool. He does yeah. seem like an encyclopedia with, with things like that. That's amazing. He knew that about He you. remembers like, you everything. I mean, it's unbelievable. He remembers everything. I mean, you know, you, you hear the stories of, uh, you know, at media, uh, when you do media stuff and what a, maybe a reporter would ask or would say like maybe a, couple, a month or two ago and he hadn't seen the guy and he sees the guy and he remembers exactly what the reporter said and sort of gives him a stare down in the days and, and sort of calls him out on that. I thought that was so cool back then. <laughs> that's it's awesome great. i assume that makes you like want to pay it back to the next generation like a guy like that says something like that to you you know you watch a ton of golf and just being the next guy to you know give it to somebody else that's coming up through the ranks has got to be pretty cool yeah it is you know i um uh, i i think that's what we're supposed to do i mean i know we're competing with each other and everything and you know it's it's funny because what was it about a month ago ryan Tannehill said you know it's not his job to uh to um you know mentor malik um i can't remember what malik the quarterback yeah. they drafted from um was it liberty i think um yeah. and i'm like you know that's not the case you know you, he's so worried about losing his job he doesn't want to mentor the guy because he's afraid he's going to lose it because he thinks that guy's better than him and so that's a bad mentality to have so you know listen i know those guys that are more talented than me i know those guys that can do other things than me and so um at the end of the day, like, I don't mind mentoring the guy because at the end of the day, they got to have it up here too. And, you know, you can only, you know, tell them so much, but at the end of the day, if they don't have it up here, which you, I can tell you, you know, if we sat down, you know, I won't do it on this thing, but if we sat down in private a little bit and we watched golf, I can tell you who's going to, you know, get the job done and who's not, you know, you, there's just signs of it. And you can just tell the guy's personality and mentality and, and the way he, he plays and the way he talks, and the way he acts that, you know, there's certain guys I just don't worry about, you know, if, if they are, they have a chance to live in a tournament, that guy doesn't scare me. And he gets a, gets a job done touche to him. You want to talk about helping the next generation, your work with the AJGA has been amazing. Uh, you just got named what the national chairman of the AJGA and, and this was this year or last year. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Last year. So how's that whole, how, how's that whole process been? I mean, I know, Brett has talked to me about just how much work you do with them and how, how passionate you are about, you know, that program and everything that you're doing there. So just talk a little bit about that. Yeah. The AJGA has been great to me. Um, you know, I only played like maybe eight, eight, nine AJGA events growing up. We didn't have the funds to go travel around. And, and honestly, I wasn't really that good as a junior golfer. So it was tough to get into them anyways, but um, you know, these kids are so good already. It's crazy. And, and so my thing to them pretty much is that, um, yes, I know they all want to play professionally, whether PGA, LPGA or, or DP world tour, or maybe the live golf now. Um, but, uh, I, I, I just tell them, I said, this golf can open up so many doors, you know, if, if you don't make it, whether it be, you meet somebody who, you know, gets you started in like a financial job that, you know, was sort of like a back, back of your mind thought or, you know, you, you start a podcast and you guys have been so successful with this and you just never know what this game of golf can do for you. So, you know, I've always just said to them, hey, make sure you treat people the right way. Make sure you're doing the right things, um, because uh, if you don't make it professionally, this this game of golf can open up so many doors. And it's it's cool to see these guys, uh, these these young um, 
ladies and young men, you know, come and play. And uh, one of the girls that uh, uh, won my first one, it was Rachel, Rachel Kuhn, I think she plays at Wake Forest. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing, I'm not, I can't remember her name exactly, but she's had a heck of a career there. The team had a chance. Uh, she, she played in um, the women's uh, Augusta national women's amateur there. And I think she, I believe she made the cut and played really well. And so I, I sent her a text and said, Hey, great playing. And so it's cool to see what they've done and follow their career to the next level. And hopefully they make it. But like I said, you know, I want every one of them to make it, but I want them to be more successful in life um, is, is a bigger key message every year to them. You're, the beginning of your story is really interesting. I was reading uh, just a little blurb that we got sent and, you know, you, you started playing golf in your backyard and, and your dad yeah. essentially told, what's the story with the pond? Oh yeah. So uh, we lived on two and a half acres in the middle of nowhere. And I'm telling you guys, it was the middle of nowhere um, at the South, South end of Brevard County. Um, and so uh, I would go out in the backyard and hit balls. And my dad said he would never allow me to play a golf course where I could never play it like holes. He would never take me to the golf course to play until I could hit it over the pond or the back of the creek uh, of our yard, which is a hundred yards in the air. He's like, I can't stand playing behind people who can't at least fly the ball a hundred yards in the air. You know, it just, they just, they hit it 20 yards and they drive your golf cart 20 yards and they hit another 20 yards. and <laughs> It's just so slow. So, He's like, you've got to at least hit 100 yards. And so I don't know what age that was. And I did it. And uh, my mom was home and I came running in. I was so excited. And um, and so I just waited out in the driveway until my dad came. And I literally I, he probably came close to hit me with the truck or something. But I mean, he <laughs> couldn't even take one foot step out. And I said, I hit it over the creek. And he's like, OK, good job. Now you got to go show me that you can do it again. You know, I, I don't, you know, I know you said you did it, but you got to show me that you can actually do it. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was, I, like I said, I, I got raised by two unbelievable parents and, and, um, you know, it's, uh, they, they taught me a lot of the correct things in life. Yeah. I love that family. Such a big thing for you. I, that was one of the biggest storylines at the Memorial that that's the first tournament you were able to win with the kids and the family present, which is so cool. What was that like seeing them running onto the, uh, to the green? Yeah, I think any any tour player that um, that uh, plays on tour that has a you know a wife or kids, you know they want that they want that moment where their wife or their kids or both of them come out running on the green. It's such a cool scene every time, especially with the kids. And so uh, you know, there's been been times I've had chances to win, and, and the wife and the kids that want to come in, you know, were a little superstitious and. I am super superstitious, but I told my wife, like, hey, no, you know, come on, fly on in, no big deal. Uh, she still she still wouldn't do it. And so um, we had an opportunity this year in, in Bay Hill to do it. They were there on the 18th green. I uh, had a putt to Ty Scotty. It just didn't happen. And, and to finally get that done, to finally have all those photos and videos that I've talked about for for a lifetime of them running on the green and going berserk. And, and, and my kids not knowing if I actually won or not, they just ran out of the green <laughs> yeah. uh, and asking me if I actually won. And then Daddy, my little hey. guy's like, yeah. And then my little guy's like, daddy, look, there's a blimp in the air. And so, you know, it just shows you what's perfect. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yep, they, that's them. Okay. No big deal. So yeah, it, it was, it was pretty cool. It was a, it was a special moment. Something that I'll always remember. Truly hard seltzer. So I'll be honest with you, it truly is typically the sponsor for our From the Gallery segment. Now, people may know that they or they may think that it's a running bit that we just announce From the Gallery is going to happen and we never do it. Um, but what actually happens is we end up talking about a billion other things and the show's two hours long and we don't get to it. In this case, we have Billy Horschel for 90 minutes. We had a lot of other things to get to. Tiger Woods withdrawal, our live show, Breaking 90, which you should go check out all those things, by the way. And obviously all the news going on with Liv and people defecting from the tour and it's taking over the entire sports world. So we haven't gotten any from the galleries this week, but we should remind you and highly recommend that you get to Truly Hard Seltzer this week, which is a clean, crisp, refreshing hard seltzer with a hint just a hint of fruit. There's over 30 flavors now. There's some flavors I didn't even know existed. They come in. Uh, um, uh, what was what was Nate Schott's favorite? It was something hibiscus, something hibiscus. That Strawberry was hibiscus, I believe. Strawberry hibiscus. Strawberry. For our guy Nate Schott, who was an incredibly mm -hmm. successful, interesting, well put together man. He loves truly. He loves that flavor and many others. There's over 30 flavors. So all cans have under 110 calories. One gram of sugar, naturally gluten-free. They've been the title sponsor of the Barstool Classic since its inception, fourth season running. 
hundreds of players that come out every tournament. Love truly they drink it start to finish. 108 degrees it was, 105 degrees, whatever it was in Vegas this past Monday. People were drinking Trulies all day, refreshing. Came They came over to the Truly Putting Contest afterwards. They're scouring the coolers. We ran out of them because people were trying to drink so many of them, um, and yet they're all under 110 calories. So go to Truly Hard Seltzer, trulyhardseltzer.com. Go get yourself, uh, figure out where you can find some Truly. That's trulyhardseltzer.com. What are your two biggest superstitions? <laughs> that's the, can't share those i don't know uh, yeah i can't i just i mean there's there's probably about 25 to tell you the truth as an ice hockey uh, goalie growing up i had like a thousand of them because i just like never knew like what game was well gonna goalies are weirdos just, in general you just hope the puck <laughs> hits you and like those are things that are buried deep in the ground that i don't think i'd tell a soul because i think people would just say i'm clinically insane like you know, we don't have, obviously, the camera shining on us the whole time. Frankie talks to us all about, like, you know, being a little crazy. And I would love to even hear, like, your back and forth with your dad. You know, like, if he's this kind of reserved guy and you're Billy, you know, like, we just are who we are. And I'll never forget one day being a crazy goalie. We lost 2-1 to some, like, podunk team. We never should have lost to him. I turned around, spiked my uh, goalie stick over the crossbar, snapped it in half. And my dad, literally, as I'm skating off the ice, goes, settle the F down. And I was so scared to leave that locker room. So I ended up just never taking my, my pads off. <laughs> just did it. We were the, I was the last guy in the locker room. My dad says, you got to take the pads off. And he read me out for like an hour and a half. And, you know, we were okay <laughs> after that. But, um, yeah, I hear all these stories. I've had that. I've, I've, I think I've, I've, everybody's I've had my got dad. a little crazy in them. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, I'm sure. listen, I'm still – I mean, I'm, I'm 35 and my dad's 70. I'm still still – sort of scared shitless of my dad um you know uh yeah. he and so i mean there's i mean yeah there's been instances on the baseball field or the golf course where i've gotten you know my, my butt handed to me and and then there's instances where you know it's not politically correct to do it today but you know where i i've, I've had the belt to the butt before and, and <laughs> yeah. uh you know for doing things that weren't, weren't right so so yeah i know all about that and um uh, but yeah um but superstition wise um, I always keep four T's in my right pocket. I keep, the, I still have the same divot, divot repair tool that I've had for the last 10 or 11 years. I have a 1936 quarter that I've had for like six years. Um, if I break a T, so if I, if I tee off and the T breaks, I have to put a T immediately in my pocket. And if I forget, and let's just say I make a bogey on the hole or like a 10 footer lips out for birdie. And then I go to the next T and I'm like, Oh crap, there's only three T's. Like, I'm like, well, the world wasn't on its right axis. So obviously that's why I made bogey. That's why the putt didn't go in the hole. You know, <laughs> just this crazy stuff like that. I mean, I'll, I've been known to have eat the same exact meal for dinner four days in a row if I played great. Had the same exact food and had the same exact breakfast and warm up exactly the same in the gym. Eat this, I, mean, I've, I mean, it's just absolutely insanity. Um, and, and, but it's just what I do, and it's just like that little comfort for me. So, is it only in golf though? Like, or are you like, do you have to have the volume on Netflix at like the same number every time? Like, is it is it only on the golf course? No, no, yeah, only on the golf course. Yeah, or like I mean, golf related things. Stuff. Obviously, the rain. I mean, you know, yeah. golf related things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just golf related things. I mean, what was it? I mean, there are times like if if we're you know when you're driving to the course like. If you're hoping the same songs came on the next the day the oh, day before like, <laughs> i'm like i'm like okay i need to have this song come on so i can remember it because i was humming it in my head the entire round of golf and so i'm hoping that song came on so perfect example 2014 uh um tour championship fedex cup uh i'm driving the golf course every day and i can't remember the band's name but I'm just listening. I mean, I, I drove up in my personal car, so I'm listening to Sirius XM, Alt Nation, um, and I am uh, just, you know, having a great week. And so, like, the first day, one of the songs comes on and sort of in my head. Second day, song comes on, you know, as I'm driving the golf course, I'm like, wow, this is cool. And then by the third day, I'm driving the golf course, I'm like, I'm panicking because I'm right around the corner and the song hasn't come on. And it came on, and I was like, yes. And then the last day, I'm like, I'm like, do I put the song on myself or <laughs> do I just uh, hope that hope that it uh, it comes on? And it was um, it came on like 
right in right after I got in the car after I got the car from ballet and it was uh something by Bastille the the band Bastille I can't remember um what it was um oh. the song was that they, it was a, a hit at that point they've got uh, a really famous I one. want you yeah, to be did. happier I want you to it's, be uh, flaws. it may have been flaws it may have been flaws okay. and I don't know why that song was it but it was just it and so I was sorry um you're good hang on Someone Pompeii was a really um, famous know. one by Bastille. Yeah, it was either Pompeii or Flaw. Oh, yeah, I can't remember which one. one it was. But it was just like, I mean, I was, and then when that song came on, I'm like, my wife was yelling at me, it was Flaws. And so, <laughs> or telling me it was Flaws. And so, I don't know why, like, that song came on, and I'm like, okay, I'm winning today. It's over. I'm, I'm winning. Like, I was so calm. Like, my stats guy, Hortsy, was like, you know, how you feeling? Like, hey, Horton, don't worry. Today, we got <laughs> we're this covered. Like, we're going to get against Roy McIlroy, number one player in the world. We're tied for lead in the final round of the Tour Championship to win the Tour Championship in FedEx. Like, it's good. It's his money in the bank, buddy. And and so, yeah, I mean, it's I'm stupid that way in certain things. Well, in well, golf especially. So. You're stupid in the sense that, like, you're the one that's making that ball go in the hole, not Bastille playing no, on Sirius XM. The thing no, is, I, like, at some point, <laughs> Billy's Horschel has to give himself some fucking credit for winning seven tournaments uh, on the PGA what? Tour no, being no. a top ten ranked player in the world. Like, this guy is hitting the golf shots. If Bastille didn't play that day, he still yeah, would have won. Yeah, but if this no, guy... No, no. If but think about in the right that mindset level. and believes himself, like, believes himself to the billionth but degree, and 100%. that extra degree might be the difference. But it's like I'm a like, baseball player. Right. I grew up playing baseball for 13 years. You never, you never step on 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 the foul line. Oh, yeah. You know when you're crossing going to the get it. Now. Even when I played the field, you never stepped on. It. You jumped over it. I get it. I was superstitious when it came to baseball. 100. percent I'm just saying. I want you to be able to say that. <laughs> I want you to be you able think to you say are that. Dr. McCabe? You yeah, I want that. Billy to be able to say that. Imagine, like this fucking guy. You have a couch and this guy's on the other it. side. You paid for this? This is the Crazy thing, though, with superstitions for a guy good. like Billy. If it works, then who cares? Yeah. Like, keep doing it. Like, Dude, like that Ryan Getzlav and Corey Perry. You ever see the thing they used to do for the Ducks? I mean, Corey Perry now is on Tampa Bay, and they're just lighting the Rangers on fire. But, right, Stupid. they used to – Getzlav used to actually have to point on all the different parts of Corey Perry's back – as they were walking out of the of the of the locker room, and it was psychotic. He would literally press like Y P. It, oh, it was nuts. He would press all these buttons on his back, and they both needed it. And if it didn't happen, like if one guy was out that day, like Getzlav would be all over the place. It was psychotic, but I guess Listen, that, yeah. There's times there's times when I'm playing like obviously we eat and drink on the course, but like let's say I was playing a really good you know round the golf and. Maybe on the twelfth hole, I grabbed the bar, and then I got bogeyed the twelfth hole, the thirteenth hole, and then like the next day, I'm like, "Man, I'm hungry. Do I have a bar, or do I just go ahead and oh. not have a bar?" You know, I mean, it's like that. It honestly is like that. And there's times, I mean, you know, it, it's it's stupid. It really is Dude, the way my mind like... works. But it's just sort of my little comfort zone, my little my little like, hey, this is just the way it is. If if if, if I eat a bar, am I going to be thinking about making a bogey now? Uh, because I just ate this bar because I ate a bar yesterday and I made right. a bogey. So, well, what if yeah. like, what if, what if something innocent happened where it's like you're driving to the golf course, you've heard the same song three days in a row, you have a five stroke lead going into the memorial and your son changes the channel as the song comes on to like baby shark, do, 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 baby or something like that. And you're just like, Oh shit, I'm going to lose today. What the fuck? I <laughs> has that happened where like <laughs> someone else has like affected your superstition and like ruined the day? No, I haven't okay, had that good, happen. Good, good, and you good. know what? Honestly, I could get messy. <laughs> it, 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 it could get real messy. I mean, you know, I'm not even sure Brett McCabe could fix me if I ever that way. So, uh, <laughs> but it's, you know, it, I mean. Yeah, it is what it it's is. It's just what it is. I, I mean, it. it's, no, it's I totally all in the mind. It. and there's, It's just the way the mind works. Like I said, you know, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll eat a bar on the seventh hole instead of the twelfth hole. You know, just so. Dude, and the best is... golfers in the world do. I mean, the best players and athletes in the world do it. I mean, Ichiro Suzuki used to do the same exact thing every time, time he batted. Derek Jeter. I mean, Nomar Garcia. Par, Garcia oh, yeah, Par. You want to talk crazy. about a guy oh. who had. I mean, crazy. come on, dude. It's crazy. So I, I guess it, whatever it is, it is. And it that works. made me think that, like. Uh, one day you're driving to the golf course and you hit a squirrel, God forbid, and then you're just, you just you're driving down the road every day squirrel. looking. Where are those squirrels <laughs> yeah. at? I gotta hit another squirrel. The woods I'll, just 
Barry and Squirrel. I don't know. If I, I don't know if I'd go that far. All right. I don't know yeah. if I go that far. Yeah. But like, I don't know. You play for a shoot of sixty-five. Who knows? Putting, uh, putting well, nuts out in front of his car and luring the squirrels I mean, in and just runs them over. Maybe driving. Maybe driving to Brookline next week. I'll hit a squirrel and I'll shoot sixty-three <laughs> in the first round, and then I'm like, oh, shit. dude, we'll go get you <laughs> some squirrels. Just... That happens. We'll go get you. Some yeah, squirrels. I might be we'll gambling get... on you. I'll, I'll dump a whole basket of squirrels in the middle of the road if I go to yeah, all over the place. We'll yeah. glue them to the road. Yeah, no problem. He's on the side of his bed. Praying and I'd be like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just yeah. got to run I'm these squirrels over. I'm sorry, God, that I did this, but I mean, I just got to run these squirrels over. I just got to do it. Three more, <laughs> three more squirrels got to meet their maker. I got to win this tournament. <laughs> it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Um, so I, we've mentioned the 2014 FedEx Cup uh, a few different times. You win ten million dollars. Do they just? I mean, do they just wire ten million dollars to you? Are you like, are you calling them, being like, hey, I want to make sure you got. I want to make sure you got my bank information right. Like, how is it, how, what's the process? You know what? It, it's funny. Um, I remember when Jim Fur- Jim Furyk won in 2011, and he said he never ever looked like all our money gets wired in on Tuesday, I believe. Um, and so he said he never looked at he never looked at uh, his bank account ever. But that FedEx Cup, he was refreshing every time on Tuesday, like. I need to see that money. It's money in my account. Money in my account. I win it. You get nine million. A million gets deferred. I never looked at my bank account. Come on, what? dude. Never. Come on. Come on. I, I, you know, I mean, it, it was shocking because coming from no money, coming from you know, you know, low middle class, you think I would like. I can't wait to see this nine million in my bank account. Never did. Never looked. Didn't Things it, change, didn't though. It. You're like, get the fucking surf and turf tonight. You know what I mean? Like you knew it was in there, though. You. You, it, knew, yeah, you that, knew that exactly. that was cushion. There was some cushion in there now, but that's crazy. Yeah. Not want to see those zeros, just like yeah, like I a still, little green. I, I, have, oh. I still have never that's looked at my bank account on a Tuesday to see if that money's ever gotten wired in at all. So maybe well, they made a mistake. Like you'd have to maybe turn they made your a mistake. You the zeros. What if they yeah. made a mistake? <laughs> Billy Horschel may not have gotten paid for like five of his wins. He just has no idea. No, I guess. Oh, but if you win, <laughs> he's that, got a money guy. Somebody. If you win that nine million guy, bucks, make sure that money gets in there. Yeah, that's right. That guy. <laughs> that guy's checking. That guy's that like, guy's come fired. on, baby. <laughs> it's the stat <laughs> guy that's going say, to Europe, play, basing all those bets on guys who he's laying people. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a time to never look at your bank account again, it's it's probably after you make nine million bucks. Like I don't have to look ever again because I don't have to worry about it. If I get that point, my I'm never. My financial guy did say. He did say, hey, $9 million just got deposited in your account. That was pretty cool. He did send me an email or text that's letting me nice know track. that it got yeah, It's it got to be some some sort of confirmation. Yeah. You're like, yeah, all right. Exactly. Yeah, all right. Exactly. So. Counts much larger today. Wee! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wahoo! <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, listen. I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, listen. I mean, Patrick Cantley won $15 million. I think, oh. you know, it's $15 million for the next couple of years, and then it's going to go to eighteen, and then it's going to 20 or 25 in, in, in a decade or whatever. I mean. It's it's an insane amount of money. I mean, it's it really is. And I mean, I tell you know people like, it's like, yeah, you won ten million. I said, yeah, but you guys forgot, I won twice and I finished second, so I've won thirteen point five million dollars in three weeks. Jesus, it's not a bad month. And, not a yeah. bad month. <laughs> yeah. It was not a bad month at all. And then two months later, two months later, financial guy comes down to our end of the year report and he said, hey, by the way, here's your tax bill this year. And I was like. Ooh. what that's a big <laughs> number and i'm like yeah i was like okay that's that's insane so yeah. I, I realized at that point I'm like yeah listen that's a lot of that's a lot of money i'm paying to the government <laughs> oh you yeah. just like you start running over stop signs you're like it's cool i paid for this it's like, this is, <laughs> no no problem gang that's- i'm like hey my road the, the the road that i drive on the golf course here to tbc is crap can we get this thing like repaved i mean i just paid you guys like Eight and a half million dollars in 2014. Yeah. I know you got the money. Yeah. I, I, like, yeah. I saw it go away from yeah. me. I like, should name the road after you. Jeez. Yeah. Um, a quick question about uh, Netflix. I know Netflix is doing the documentary this year. Uh, we spoke to them a little bit. Kind of understand they're a little bit secretive. They're a little bit like open at times about what all is going on. It's been an insane year. Has the Netflix crew and all that like impacted things at all have they been like around is it change yours are you trying to be careful with microphones is like how's that how's that affected things at all um you know you know you saw them early in the year and i haven't really seen them you know they were in the locker room i i actually called a tour because i was sort of they said they weren't going to be in the locker room they were in the locker room um and if they were they wouldn't be out of the way but i was like changing my shoes 
next to whoever. I don't know who the player was. And I'm like, these guys are just – they weren't filming me, but they were, like, in my space as I'm trying to get ready to go play, like, the final round or something. Uh, and I was like, come on, guys, just give us a little bit of space in here. Uh, but, no, I – you know, I'm not doing the Netflix. Uh, I don't know any – you know, I don't know much about it. I know the guys that have done it. Uh, but if, if it comes out anything like Drive to Survive for F1, I mean, that's a big hit because – I'm a massive F1 guy, followed it for the last decade. And then when that came out, you know, you got even closer, uh, you got, you know, inside and you learn more about the drivers and everything. So if they can make, and I, I mean, I think F1 is really cool. But I'm like, how are you going to make us golfers look like F1 drivers? I mean, <laughs> these guys are driving at 200 miles per hour. And if they make a wrong turn, they may die. I mean, if we hit a bad shot, like we're not going to die. Well, if you hit a bad You're shot, a someone may die. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> if someone's biased, I was just say, no, <laughs> yeah. 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 that was good. Uh, that was good. Uh, but I mean, if I had a bad shot, I mean, somebody's like, damn, you suck, Billy. That's the worst thing that's going to happen to me, you know? So, um, uh, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, it, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting how they make us look great because I think they can make a, make it look really cool, cool and bring even more fans into the game and draw even more fans. Like you said, Frankie, this next generation, you know, get them more involved in a game of golf. Speaking How of do you saying, feel about oh, the – Oh, go ahead. Just real, real quick, re- speaking of you saying, oh, Billy, I got a DM. We were talking about you one time. I forgot what time it was. But someone was like, me and my group of buddies, it was eight of us that play, and every time we hit a bad shot, we all say, oh, Billy. And no one at the club knows why. And it's just <laughs> you have a bunch of dudes playing at a country club, and every single one of these guys all say, oh, Billy – all their names are different. Not one of them's Billy. I thought that was very, very funny. Just a collection That's of funny. probably hit horrible out. shots all the just time. Just like, oh, it's Billy. I mean, <laughs> you know, like I said, I don't, I don't run my Twitter account anymore, but I, I run my, I still do my own Instagram and, and I'll look at the comments and people will be like, you know, I'll be like, bad read, Billy. Really bad read, Billy. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. I'll just get like people comment that all the time. Like, doesn't matter. It doesn't, I, it doesn't matter what the, the post oh, yeah. is about. There's just yeah. like, there's always like four or five comments about, Really bad read, Billy. Really bad read. <laughs> yeah, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> that's cool. Like, that's got to be cool. That's like people know your thing. you. That's your thing. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, it's my thing. I mean, it's like I said, you know what? It's if, if, if whatever gets more people to watch golf and if they watch me because I can look like a psycho sometimes, I, I don't know which one of you called me. Um, that <laughs> oh, American psycho. I said you're like Christian Bale. I said it's almost like, it's almost like a compliment. Uh, the, the, that's guy. fine. You know, more eyes to the golf golf course, more money coming in, more people watching. It's only better for the game of golf. It's a good attitude. That's the right attitude. Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. There's a little bit of entrepreneurship talked about in here. We began this show, which we go back to really in our discussion at the beginning, which you heard with Billy Horschel about when just Trent and myself, we're getting after it. We're trying to create our own little niche, niche in the golf world. Maybe we threw Billy Horschel under the bus. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. Maybe it worked out well. Really unclear, but the point is you're trying to make it. You're kind of uh, uh, rubbing rubbing shoulders and el- elbowing your way through, trying to figure out your way, your your uh, you know market share in the space, build your own company. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses that you're trying to beat, that you're trying to catch up to, so that upstart startups and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed connect with your customers drive sales manage your day-to-day driving sales is key right lurch you're big you like to drive sales one of your big things you got to make it easy for people you know what i mean if you're going to drive sales you got to make it easy to buy shopify does that pretty simple checkout my um i said this before but my brother's wife runs a little business dean rue she uses shopify and absolutely loves it um So what do you call it? A little easy. tool? A you call it a tool? It. Sweet. A suite of features. A, a suite call... of features. A suite of features. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. You can go. Everybody okay there? I heard a little. Uh... Lurch, yeah. Lurch dropped an air pump. Oh, yeah, it just fell right, right out of like the like a, like, sounded like Sometimes a, you can like lose an avalanche. it. Avalanche. So, I'm surprised it doesn't fall out more with those giant head features that you have going on there. But um, you just can go. Nice. Somebody on the golf course today called Trent Lurch, and that was a real awakening moment. Yeah, how did you take that? I had a salad for lunch afterwards. I was out there. Shopify. And he goes, hey, hey, Frankie Lurch. I was Lurch. Like, Frankie Lurch likes to see you. I was like, I was like fuck, I got to hit the gym. 
Would you take that as a put down? I almost think that, you know, that's a compliment for you. Took it as one of the meaner things that's ever been said to me. Because <laughs> you got about five or six inches on the guy. So, like, if they think that that, they must think he's a big boy. Go to Shopify.com slash four, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to Shopify.com slash four right now. Shopify.com slash four. And now back to Billy Horschel. Oh, I was just going to ask if you um, how you feel about the boom in F1 popularity. Since you've been following it for a decade, do you feel like people are just jumping on the bandwagon or is it you know, a rising tide lifts all ships type deal. You know, I think it's great. I mean, listen, it doesn't, you know, when you're, when you're trying to grow and everything, you're going to have bandwagon people. I mean, it's no different than now with the premier league, you know, how that's taken off. And obviously I've been following that for, for more than a decade. And with NBC showing, you got more guys getting involved and figuring out what team they're going to support, you know, the American, you know, Americans are trying to figure out what teams are going to support. So, right. you know, I think it's, it's great. It's great. I, you know, the um, the Miami Grand Prix, I, I didn't go to it, but they had a lot of celebrities there. And, you know, I, I would only think that as long as the drivers are happy with it, as long as they're still getting recognition and getting, you know, all the, you know, when they're at the event, like it's them, it's the drivers are why that, that, that sport, the, the racing, that's why everyone's there. If they're still getting all that, you know, recognition and people are realizing that that's fine. You know, that's, that's all that matters. So. Yeah. Who's your, uh, who's your squad in F1? Who's your guy? You got any? Uh, uh... Yeah. I'm a Max Verstappen guy. I love Max. You know, he just, he just, I mean, he doesn't give a rat's ass in my opinion when he's driving. And then, you know, Daniel Ricardo is pretty cool. Um, you know, everyone seems to love Daniel. And then uh, I think, I think Lando Norris and, and George Russell are going to be two really good drivers. So um yeah, you know, they, 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 they do need, and I guess why I love Max and, you know, I've always loved, loved guys like this is, is cause, you know, cause I mean, until last year, I felt like everyone hated Max because everyone is such a Lewis Hamilton guy and they want to lose Hamilton to win. And then Max won and Max is getting more, more supporters. But, um, you know, I always pulled for the guy that other people didn't pull for that everyone hated or, or didn't like, that was always, you know, the guy I always wanted to, you know, do well. And so Max is, uh, he's a hell of a driver and, and, um, yeah, I just love that guy. Do you follow that guy on Instagram? Connor sketches. He's also got a golf channel show. I think he, he has, you Oh, th- he's the Irish guy, right? Yeah. He does unbelievable impersonations Phenomenal. of all of the premier league guys and all of the F1 guys. When you're have some downtime, like maybe tonight yeah. or something, go look at his Instagram. You're gonna have the the time of your life watching this guy. He does a Daniel Ricardo impersonation that is honestly so good it's scary, with the guns <laughs> yeah. and everything. It's 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 frightening. You know what? It's funny because I have seen the Premier League one. I haven't seen the F one, and I think it's absolutely hilarious. And he did that one um, with Poulter, yes. Lee Westwood, and the yes. Live one. I thought that was absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, really good. <laughs> I mean, the, the I can't remember what the Dust, Dustin Johnson thing was. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I mean, what he said as Dustin Johnson, I think he said, you know, I, I said that if they didn't pay me, at, you know, you know, a penny over whatever, then yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not taking it. And I don't know what the <laughs> yeah. number was. But I just thought it was absolutely yeah. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is so funny and so good, and I mean. Poulter is a really good friend of mine, a really good friend. And I mean, I, his Poulter stuff is absolutely hysterical. Yeah. I love him. I love him when he does Poulter because I think it's so spot on. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I can't stop laughing. It's funny you're so tight with Poulter because, you know, these guys, I hopped on the podcast probably a year or two after these guys started going. They really have had a history with Ian Poulter. If you want to talk about history. Ian Poulter's put on his Instagram. He's never going to go on this show because the, these guys have, what was yep. the word? Harassed Har- me. Harassed us. They've harassed, harassed me for five or six me. years. He, we've actually had, we've had a, a, an inside source text Ian to be like, just go on the show, like make amends. Like, let's just somehow make this into a funny thing. And he said, absolutely not. So that's where we're at with, 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 with Poulter. Yeah. You know, Poults, you know, Poults can rub people the wrong way. It, it, you know, he's English, you know, that's <laughs> just what happens sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, you know, 
similar situation. He grew up with no money. He, 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 everything he's done, he's done it on his own. He's made it on his own. And, you know, he's, do I love that? I mean, I, I make fun of him because I'm like, dude, why did you have to do the Netflix thing? Like you put your entire life every second on Instagram, on your Insta stories and everything. Like the only thing I haven't seen is you taking a shit and wiping your own butt with it. You know, that's the only thing I haven't seen you do that you haven't posted on Instagram. But, you know, that's him. That's what he wants to do. And, and so I don't fault him for anything. Uh, but he's a great guy. Uh, you know, I know, you know, like I said, he's been good to me. He's funny. He's English. I get along with a lot of the people that are English. I don't know why that is. Like, I'm, I, I have more, you know, I just I love being around those English people because they're blunt. They're straightforward. Oh, yeah. They like to have a good time. They tell you how it is. I mean, they, they love a little banter back and forth. Like, you know, I love playing with him because, you know, Poulter and I will just be, you know, we hit a bad shot. He'll make fun of me and I'll make fun of him, you know, in a, in, in a term that That's we're correct. competing against each other with. So uh, maybe I'll try to get Poulter to the, the push him your guys as well. That would be an all-time all like foreplay. Like all foreplay moment if Ian also, Poulter was on foreplay. Just an all-time foreplay story that of all people we would have, Billy Horschel would be our guy that gets yes, Ian Poulter right. to do our show. <laughs> I, you know, I think, that, I think this has gone okay. I, you know, I, it's gone fantastic. We got the stuff out of the way at the front, and now we're just hanging. I mean, we've been we've been recording for over an hour now. It's been very natural. Yeah, listen, I, I just said, guys, I, my my goal wasn't to come in here and, and thank you, Colby. My 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 goal wasn't to come in here and change your opinions of me. I was just I was just going to be who I am, and and you know that's how I've always been. And if you guys like it, you guys like it. If you guys don't, then you know that's fine. You know, and, it's yeah. I think that, we're all we're all big fans of, of you now. It's yeah. just as simple as simple as that. It's just whenever we're anyone comes on the yeah. show, talks for uh, an hour, shows that they're right. a human being, can show any sort an ounce of just being a person. We're just like, yup, best friends forever. Me and you share <laughs> the same coach. We got to come up with a team name, by the way. The fact that we both have the same mental coach. I mean, we're now brothers in arms. I mean, it's good. We got to exactly so, something's good. We got to come up with some sort of name. I think Trent had one before. Was it the? Uh, <laughs> What it's, was it? it was, um, McCabe's Babes. McCabe's Babes. Okay. We'll <laughs> workshop that. Hey, we're two good looking guys. <laughs> hey, I mean, why not? Look at that. I like you that. Know? I got a little sunburn okay. today, but I'm wearing purple, so it doesn't really suit me. I, I mean, you you look like yeah, you always have that little baby face. You, I'm not sure you can grow any facial hair ever. So, no. no you know, it's, it's, it's a Justin not Thomas. A uh, the not, Justin not Thomas, one. like chin to nipples. There's just nothing there. I mean, no. I mean, I'm sure you sometimes still get ID because everyone thinks you may be under the age of, of 18 100%. or 21 uh, for alcohol. I so. barely get into uh, rated R movies. Yeah, <laughs> which is I what, mean, like 14. Hey, you know, that's <laughs> a really good thing to have because when you when you're 50, you're gonna look 30. So the problem here is that I'm starting to get all the 30 year olds. I'm starting to grow gray hair. Uh, it's just like genetics. Like, I mean, you can't oh, really I've see got it that. now. Don't worry. You know, I got. Hey, I mean, I, you can't see it. it's dark as shit. But I'm that's fearing. All I said. I'm gray fearing hair. that like I look so young, and then with the gray hair, I'm gonna look like a like a cartoon character. It's like you need to have some sort of like real <laughs> facial structure to have gray hair. So that's something I'm dealing with in my own world. Would you rather have hair, or yeah. I'm sorry to go here, or would not rather have hair like ribs? I'd rather have any sort of hair. I mean, he's just yeah. That's that's it's a penis. Yeah. I mean, so it's just, I, hair, just I said I will take gray hair if there's still hair on top of my head. Big time. Because I don't think I have a good looking bald head. I've never seen it bald, but I'm afraid that if I have to go bald, it could look really ugly. Gray you know, looks. I shaved my head once. You look like you got fried. wisdom when you got gray hair. Wisdom. A little salt and pepper. But yeah. I but I think now you know, and I I'm not sure how my beard would look, but like. When you're bald and you, and you have a beard, like you look like, I think that's a great look too. People that are bald and have a have a really good beard, like that's a hell of a look. That can you grow? Out. Can you grow the Appreciate facial that. hair? Yeah, I can grow it. Yeah, that'd be a so. good look on you. Phil had facial I've had hair all of a sudden. Phil, did you see I've, Phil's <laughs> facial hair? It's a little. Phil looked little... bizarre. Can we talk yeah, about I Phil's did. eyeballs? You know, what was Phil that does about? not look well. He does not look. He was well. just like. <laughs> Taking pictures, <laughs> crazy. it does not look well. I don't know. I've only seen. I've only seen. I think one picture with him and DJ. I saw some facial hair. So that's pretty interesting. What's going on over there? So <laughs> to say I the think, least. I think Dylan to chair today. He's like Phil looks generally well, confused to be here. He's just like, <laughs> what do you guys think of it? I mean, you know, we get asked about it all the time. What do you guys think of the lip tour? I mean, you guys have been doing your podcast now for for a handful of years plus. You guys have been around the PJ tour. You guys have done stuff with Tiger Woods. You guys have done stuff 
and been a part of stuff. You do all that tailor-made, um, you know, you know, uh, commercial stuff and everything. So, you know, what's, what's the, uh, how do you guys see that tour? Honestly, I would say we've gone back and forth on it a lot because of, I think a lot of the reasons most people have is like on its, if you're all living in a perfect world, I think it'd be easy for people to say, oh, this is money coming from a bad source that's done horrific things. I don't want to be used by them, so I'm out. But in reality, our world runs by money. It just does. Yep. Your entire family and generations of your family with some of these numbers that they're throwing out could be taken yeah. care of forever. And so I think I, I on a personal level, can understand it from both sides. It might sound like a soft answer, but I thought JT oh. put it really well today where he said like, look, I don't necessarily agree with it. I'm not going to go that way. I'm disappointed guys aren't necessarily staying with the PGA tour, but I'm not going to hate Dustin Johnson when he comes back because he and I have a different opinion on things. And that's pretty hard to say these days in a world where people are so hateful based on their opinion. It's almost like you cannot coexist yep. in a world with someone that disagrees with you which is insane. So yeah, I think like if it were, if it were a perfect, um, you know, ideal world, I could, un I would be like, yeah, everybody should say no. But if you choose to go and take a gigantic sum of money, people make a lot of crazy decisions and, yep. and aggressive decisions based on money. It's hard to just purely hate on somebody for doing that. I say, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, I've said this, you know, last couple of days doing interviews and I've said it to the, you know, to, we've talked about it with other players, uh, you know, in the locker rooms and at clubhouses at tournaments. And listen, I don't mind everyone goes. If that's the decision they made, if they made a decision that's going to, you know, put them off in a better financial position or they want to play less or, or whatever it may be, like, that's their decision. Like, that's okay. You know, do now, obviously the money comes from a country that has a lot of issues. And, uh, you know, I don't know a lot about Saudi Arabia, period, other than what, you know, that's been talked about, but, you know, I, I don't fault anyone for doing it. You know, that's, that's what they want to do. You know, as I said, I'm happy with the PJ tour and I'm not, you know, I'm all it's where I'm going to be, but um, I'm not going to, you know, not talk to Ian Poulter anymore because he's playing the live tour. Yeah. You know, that's not right. It's like, you know, it's like the way we are in our society nowadays. Like if you hang out with your, some friends, some new friends and, you know, three months later, you know, one of your friends finds out you're a Republican and like, Oh, I don't hang out with Republicans. Like what really? Because just because I'm a Republican and we may differ in some certain views, now you don't like me. You liked me right. for the first three months before you found that out. So, you know, it's 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 tough. I mean, I don't I don't. It's tough. I don't want to see any player get banned or suspended. I don't think that's a good look for the game of golf. But I understand the tour has got to protect, you know, their business and and do things that you know they see fit. Um, you know, and I don't I don't think any you know. I don't think any player is jealous that other guys have gone over there. You know, some of the guys probably wish it was them. You know, some of the guys that were hoping to get that money. Um, yeah, but, does that uh, – I was going to ask if that affects you at all. I mean, when you see guys that you know you're clearly or you believe that you are better than, that you've had a better career than, that you could beat week in and week out, and you find out that they're making tens of millions of dollars to go play somewhere else and play eight events a year, or even if it's close to that in terms of, you know, truth or what's actually going on – I mean, is that – I feel like that has to make it difficult or tempting or annoying on some level. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I read somewhere that they're they're projecting um, someone to make $42 million in their eight events this year um, based off, based off you know, uh, that little prize, that $30 million they gave that they're going to split between the top three guys. The top guy's going to get $18 million and then – they're saying that if he's a top guy, they're gonna he's probably gonna win X amount of events, which is this money and team money, and so they're projecting forty two million dollars in eight, eight, eight events. I mean, that's pretty it's pretty insane. That's a lot of money, and you know I don't agree um, with maybe Roy's comment that he said early in the year at Genesis, where you know pretty much said like money doesn't change who you are. You know money. You know you're not gonna change who you are because of money. But the thing is, money does allow people, like you said, that live a better lifestyle or set their kids, kids, generational wealth, you know, going forward. So if that's what they're thinking. That's their prerogative. And, and then, then, hey, you can't stop somebody for doing that. But as I've, and, and Roy knows this, he's sitting on 
hundreds of million dollars already. So, you know, he's not going to make a decision based off money. You know, Tiger's not going to make a decision based off money. They're going to make a decision that, you know, they think it's the best, you know, decision. You know, they can look at it in a bigger sense than just the money aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I know there's going to be some guys that make $15 million this year. I'm like, gosh, damn, that guy, that guy could only make maybe like two and a half million in his, his best year and 10 years on PJ two is two and a half million. And now he's made 15 million. I mean, yeah, that's gonna, that sort of sucks, but you know, if I wanted to go down that road, you know, then, you know, I, I could reach out and go down that road, but I, I never had really any interest of going down that road. I've, I'm pretty happy where I am. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I guess it's loyalty to me and just the relationships I've created and think about not being able to go to like the farmer's insurance open to a beautiful place in La Jolla, California, not to be able to play 16th at the Phoenix open and get roused on and then, you know, get yelled at. And then I'm yelling at them because they're being idiots and I'm trying to make fun of the, the fans in the crowd and their buddies are all laughing that I'm chirping back at them and everything. And so <laughs> like that's stuff that I, you know, that, I would miss if I had to go join that lift tour because I don't think that's going to happen. You're not going to see the crowds that you see at certain other events. You're not going to ha have that, that energy and that just that, that special, you know, tradition, I guess you say it is because you've been going there for so many years and that, um, you know, to have. So um, yeah, it, it's an interesting thing. And obviously as we both, as we all know, this isn't going away anytime soon. Yeah. Do you, no, do you think not. this inspires change for the PGA tour? Do you think they look at things now? differently i mean you talk about 47 events and like do you yeah. think now the pga tour really looks inside their own house and says maybe we do some things in those back those last you know 12 events that nobody plays those are straight team events because we talked about on the last show nobody really tracks the fedex points over the year like you, we were alluding to it earlier frankie was talking about it just like that season-long game nobody has any idea what that is and oh, so really to check does. in on your guys to see like if they're moving up and down, it'd be interesting. So wondering if you th feel like the PGA tour will move at all based on what Liv is kind of trying to do. Yeah. I mean, as you guys know, um, you guys are close with kids and kids is a player director and he's been on the pack um, for many years and I've been on the pack the last two years. So, you know, there is change coming. Uh, there has always been change coming. Um, even before I heard about the PGL, the SGL, the, the tour, had always talked about, you know, there was going to be an increase in money, you know, coming to the PJ tour, depending on how our TV contracts turned out. So they knew what, you know, they were, you know, if you ask the right questions from the tour, you get the, the, the answers that you wouldn't get normally. Um, so I knew there was some change coming um, with purses and everything else. And yes, some of the stuff we've done is because of live to, to try to counteract that. But yeah, I think there are, there's going to be changes coming to the PJ tour. Do I think, um, the changes we may see over the next couple of years is the final changes. No, I think there's going to be even more drastic changes. And, you know, one thing I've said is that I think we, we will have a global tour on the PJ tour. We'll play something like maybe 30 events a year, you know, it'll be, you know, maybe like a hundred guys or 80 guys, you know, small cut or no cut, um, you know, and then the guys will be filtered in and uh, in and out based off, you know, through the Corn Ferry Tour and then whatever the European Tour is going to be called, maybe the Challenge Tour. Uh, but I think the DP World and, and PJ Tour are going to combine, create a World Tour, play all over. We're going to have individual events. We're going to have team events. Um, I think that's that's the bigger, you know, vision that I see for the Tour at some point. Um, I may be wrong. I may be right. But, you know, I'm just looking at everything on the wall and, and seeing how, how this doesn't become a global tour. Um, especially when you look at the finances part of it in the sense that the tour asks so much money now um, to the sponsor PJ tour event and to, to get, to continue to ask for more money, you have to give up, you have to give a even better product. You can't keep giving to get the same product. I mean, if, if the PJ tour asks right now, $18 million to sponsor a tournament. And in a couple of years, that's going to be, you know, five years, that's 25 million. Well, what is that sponsor? That sponsor going to be like, what else am I getting for my $7 million more? Yes, I know over time things increase and everything, but that's $7 million more. Like, you still have the same product. You still have everything. Like, I'm losing now uh, money by giving up $7 million more. So I've got to – I need something in return. And that's, you know, having smaller fields with guaranteed top players. You know, because of smaller field guaranteed, you're going to get a better field on a regular basis. Top players are going to play. 
So then, you know, now your clientele that comes in, you know, you have more clientele and customers come in, they have a great week and they re up their, their contracts even more. And so that's where the value comes for there for them. So, you know, that's, that's just what I see. Um, I, you know, I may be wrong. I may be right, but you know, only, time only tell. That's interesting to hear you say that. Cause we actually last show, we discussed for a while, like where is the tours true value that they're able to get all of this money and all of this revenue that they're making. And I, the, the global tour sort of vision um, is one I had almost kind of forgotten about because it was going that way pre pandemic, right? I mean, you guys had the, yeah. the Asian swing, um, through Korea and China. And that was, you know, right before the pandemic in the, in the fall, that was becoming a more and more prominent part of the schedule. It was like a whole month of the schedule was going over there. Uh, so it's interesting to hear that because I guess we had almost forgotten about that aspect of it and that, you know, that's probably going to resume. I mean, obviously RBC, they're in Canada again this week for the first time since pre pandemic. Um, so, you know, with the, with the live, I feel like that has, it's almost gone in a few weeks from my vantage point from like a laughing stock, a joke, Rory called it dead in the water to, it almost seems inevitable that there will be whether the lives included or not, but probably will be to some degree, some sort of, you know, collaboration and coming together of, of the tours rather than some hardcore combative, uh, you know, thing, because it's just, it, it, that can't be sustained forever. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know how they're going to keep doing it. You know, at some point lives got to turn a profit or, or get the return on, on money. I mean, you just don't throw two, three billion dollars away and, and just say, oh, that's no big deal. I mean, yes, they, they're trillions of dollars and they make a ton of money off their oil and, and other exports and everything. But, uh, you know, I, I just look at it this sense. And, you know, when we when the PJ Tour goes and plays overseas in the, in the past and we've gone to Japan and the crowds have been massive and we've gone to Malaysia and see the support that they get in China and in South Korea. And, you know, when, you know, I, I go and play over in the UK or I've gone and played other, other places in the world. Like people love to see PJ tour players. You know, they, they want to see PJ tour players because that's what they see on TV. That's what is, is broadcasted the most to them. And so, you know, the, the tour would, and, and they're not idiots, but they would be idiots if they're not trying to find some way to capitalize on that, on that exposure, on that value, on that uh, excitement, and enthusiasm that these fans have when PJ tour players go and travel outside the United States. So there is some, some something's going to happen. You know, like I said, I, I, I'm, I don't, I, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not smart enough to figure it all out. And, and, and the tour has got some unbelievably smart people there and, and, and they're going to figure out some way somehow, I think um, to just uh, continue to grow because um, I do think our product the next 10 to 15 years is going to look completely different than what you see now and, and, and goes to Frankie what he said, you know, we're not going to see individual tournaments, you know, every event be individual tournaments. You're going to see more at team format and some type of concept and, and, and something go along those lines uh, going forward um, with some type of individual component, possibly part of it as well. So you still have that individual aspect. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, this, I mean, we're, it's a strange, unique, weird time in the game of golf because there's never been a challenger to the PGA Tour a true challenger to the PJ tour and is the Saudis a true challenger? I don't know, but in the, in the, you know, the monetary aspect, they are in the, you know, the financial aspect, they are a true challenger. When you're, when you're th talking about throwing around two, three, two and $3 billion a, uh, around. So. Yeah. And I mean, they're drawing players, right? I mean, it's, it's not, it's not. It was am amazing. Same field that you're Amazing. playing against, but Dustin Johnson was number one in the world like a year ago. He's he's obviously a multi-major winner. Bryson, if it's very much rumored, he's going and reports. Are, I mean, he won the U.S. Open a year and a half ago. So it's like clearly some of their – Phil's one of the one of the top ten probably greatest players of all time. So they're clearly drawing some people over there, which, yeah, I mean, I guess that's unprecedented since the PGA of America and PGA Tour split, you know, a long, long, long time ago. So – Kudos to you being able to win a goddamn golf tournament with all that going on. That's amazing. You know what? I, I don't even worry about it. Uh, as I said, it doesn't bother me. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I've told guys, I said, I support them to go play the live tour. You know, I'm not a, it, is, is, or people may not like that. I said that. Sure. But I mean, 
like Richard Blaine's become a good friend of mine. And, you know, he qualified for the U.S. Open last year, won his first event ever on, on a tour um, in like 400 and something starts. You know, he's been a journeyman his entire life and he's had a great last, you know, 12 months. And now he's capitalizing on that at 49 years of age. He's got no status on the Champions Tour. So when he turns 50, he can't come over here and play. Everyone's younger and getting better and they hit it a mile. And so he, he's, he knows where he's going. He's going downhill. You know, it's going to be tough for him to compete. So for him to maybe take three or four years and, and capitalize on what the live can offer him financially and change his lifestyle and his kid's lifestyle going forward. I mean, that's, that's, that's something that he's got to do. And it's stupid if he doesn't do it. So like I said, it's, it's a unique time. And um, I wish, I, I would wish something like DJ would, would stay with the PGA tour. I would wish Phil would stay with the PGA tour because Phil's been so instrument, instrumental in building the PGA tour, what it is now. They both have capitalized. I mean, PGA tour, Phil, they both made a lot of money together. Um, you know, and so, um, I, I, you know, I, I always knew Bryce had issues with the PJ tours. He's had issues with the PJ tours since he stepped up foot on out on tour day one. Um, but you know, it's sad to see some of these guys that we may not be able to see him play PJ tour events anymore. Um, you know, because I think, you know, they, they still are really great for the game of golf. It doesn't matter what tour they're playing on. Yeah. It'd be, I mean, it'd almost be, um, irrational to be hating on somebody like you just tried Richard Bland or somebody like that. That's making a decision. That's almost, it's almost obvious that they should be making that decision. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, it just, some of the, some of the guys that did make the decision that I'm, I'm just very curious, like they didn't need it financially. Like yeah. they're very set. You know, what, what was their main reason? I mean, was it truly the financial? Was it for other reasons, you know, that we don't know about? Um, but, you know, yes, I understand DJ may have got $150 million and, and that's a lot of money to turn down. But, you know, I mean, yeah, you may be insane to turn it down. But, man, there's so much other other stuff on the other side. If he stayed with the PJ Tour, um, legacy, winning more tournaments. I mean, there's other stuff that's involved. So. Uh, yeah, it's just a tough, tough thing. I, I mean, like I said, I, 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 I don't know where, where to go with it, to tell you the truth. I do think a lot of people's answer at, at their core is probably like, yeah, I'm probably not smart enough to, to answer it perfectly. It's like I, we don't know all the geopolitical ramifications and issues, and you hear this and that, and you're trying to be as, as morally sound as you can, but also try to be reasonable. Hey, guys. How you doing? <laughs> hey. We got to get Billy back to family time right now. Yeah, exactly. He's giving us more uh, than no, but, enough but time. Honestly, I mean, you know, you know, the other thing too is like, and I've told the tour this for for many years now. I said, you know, there's going to come a time where someone's going to come along that has a bigger bank account or has connections to sponsors that can offer, you know, a product like the PJ Tour and give more rewards. Whether it be, you know, you pay to pay them a salary or pay them a signing bonus like the Lives doing or something else. Um, you know, and so obviously the tour has always known that could happen. I don't know if they, if they thought it would happen and did they think it would, was going to come from Saudi Arabia. But I mean, what if, what if the people who were backing the live tour were clean, you know, there was nothing wrong with them, you know, what would happen then? You know, that would be a, you know, an interesting scenario there that there was no geopolitical backlash for, for going to join that tour. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh. It, it's a strange time. I mean, I think, you know, uh, it's a strange time. I've, I've read a lot of articles of people in the world bashing players for going because, of, you know, it's sports washing, it's, you know, it's blood money, whatever they, they call it. Um, but I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't bash anybody for that. They're making decisions that's for the betterment of themselves and their family, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's you know, probably I mean, where, we, kinda, where we've settled You're what I've to. said the whole time about this. It's just hard. It's a really hard situation. It's like there's hypocrisy on all different sides. Like, how do you think Saudi Arabia has all the money? All these countries are just buying oil from them. So, I mean, if you really want to just go like around and around and around, it's just easier to blame the one person that like takes a, doesn't take a stand or doesn't become that like, you know, is Dustin Johnson supposed to be like a, a world leader where he's like trying to make change in Saudi Arabia? I don't know. I mean, probably in a perfect world, we would love for our 
um, athletes to be these types of people. But like, like you said, there's a lot of guys on that list that are doing this just because they really just have to. We talked Max Homa when he won this year was like, I remember making $18,000 like my first couple of years on tour. And like, I was just couldn't make any money. And like, that yeah. was a really shitty, horrible time in my life. I'm sure his like mental health was down and like just everything yeah. about his life sucked because he gave everything to this game and the game gave him nothing back. And all of a sudden someone's like, and- here's a golden ticket. I know it's coming from a weird, bad place and we probably shouldn't be doing it, but you know what? There's guys that are going to take it. And it's just like, it's the way the world works. You know, you're exactly right. And I guess the only thing that I say, and I'm not, you know, saying it's right or wrong or, you know, condoning it, but you know, where are all these writers? Why don't they look at like the U S companies that do business with Saudi Arabia? Like no one, I haven't seen an article written about all the companies that do business with Saudi Arabia and, and make money. Yeah. off of that and all the, the list goes on and on do man. business it's, it's, i mean it's, it, it, yeah. where does it stop i mean you know why why is why are the golfers the first one to really be taking the hit um you know there's they, there's been companies and governments and and people doing business with them for years and years and now now it's the golfers i mean f1 not to hop on f1 but f1 was there you know no one seen the bash f1 drivers i mean there was a couple articles but you know they have boxing matches there and soccer teams go there and train and all this other stuff so i'm not condoning any anything but it's just funny like i just i'm just talking as a golfer that why are we the ones that are are taking the the yeah. blunt of everything right now when you know this has been going on for years and, yeah. and I, I just don't agree yeah totally yeah, I think it's interesting also on like the side of uh, like Greg Norman, what he's done. And like, I don't think he's done a perfect job managing kind of the live tour in general. Um, we all make I mean, mistakes, you know, Lurch? <laughs> That's right. We do all make mistakes. We'll see what There's happens. A couple big, a couple big ones over there on that side of the pond. But I mean, it is what it is. Like, it's like you, Greg Norman's in a weird fucking spot. Oh, yeah. I can't I imagine. That, his, we always say like what his text messages look like. It's just like eye emojis. Like where are you at? Like just like all. He's not things. sleeping well. I mean, where no. I'm at, it's like almost two a.m. in the morning. But he's he hasn't slept a wink in the last <laughs> couple months. No, 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 it's been weird. Anyways, um, but, but Billy, dude, this has been unbelievable, dude. Challenge. This was awesome. Honestly, from like what we expected this to be, I, you know, we all have our group texts. It's like, oh, Billy's coming on the show. Like, oh shit, this is gonna be something. <laughs> You know, and, and ha- uh, honestly, a shout out, shout out to Brett because it, it had, had Brett McCabe not really. I mean, we spent the whole weekend with him, and had he not really just set it up to be like, dude, like you're not. This isn't going to be anything. It's gonna. He's gonna be like. He calls you the most misunderstood guy on tour, and I think that's a perfectly way, perfect way to put you. Whether that be like by self harm of like you being misunderstood because we all just see you on TV once in a while throwing your club or getting mad, that's one thing. Or maybe you just like need to come on more podcasts because now people finally see who you are. I think this couldn't have gone any better. I honestly think that you're just like a down to earth, regular dude. We didn't scream at each other. We don't want to murder each other. I'd love to like you know. <laughs> I, I, I like yeah. I just I think this went great. So I really want to appreciate. I really appreciate you coming on. I want to thank you for the time and. uh we have to get a match going is what we have to do. And then I hope you bring that fire in that match. Like I want to see like Billy Horschel fucking getting angry when we are like, we're up three through six against him in the, yeah, you want the real thing. I want yeah. the yeah. real thing. Uh, <laughs> Four oh, T's in the pocket. I'll the see whole if I can thing. bring that. Oh, you have to bring it. You have to bring it. <laughs> Billy, we appreciate it, man. Thank you for taking the time. It's been an hour My and a half. I know guys. you got family Thank to get to. We talked about him pretty much everything. So, um, you're the man. We appreciate it. Uh, you're just, I think you're one of our guys now. So, we, you know, we appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Thank you, Billy. Have a great night. Thanks, Billy. See ya. See ya, man. Thank you. My pleasure. Good luck in the U.S. You guys going to be there? Yep. Yeah, we'll be up yeah. there. We'll be there Monday through Wednesday. Okay. See you guys out there then. We'll see you out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds great. Don't so, hit yeah. a squirrel. But if you need squirrels, or do. I'll get a box like, of them for you. Let us know. Depends. If you hit one on the way, just tell us. We'll bring squirrels. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll, I'll, I'll say, hey, I hit it on this street on this time. Yeah. You know, make sure you're there. To, you know. Done. Yeah, we'll lock perfect. it down. Honestly, no just problem. put a dead squirrel. 
The, it could be the same score as yesterday. Just put it right there in the same thing. I was running it over again. That's a smart we'll guy. That's it. a thinking we'll man. Keep, we'll preserve. Or if we want to be smart like gamblers, we'll see if Billy gets off to a really good start. We find out his route to the to the golf course, and then we start putting like construction sites on the way there. Like we're wearing like construction hats, being like, "Oh, you guys got to go over here. We're doing a detour today." He's gonna be like, "No, I gotta get down that street." Yeah. You're exactly right. I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, I got to go that way. I got to go that way. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. All right. All right. Uh, Thanks again, dude. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Billy. See you in Boston. Thanks, Billy. See ya. Bye.